The cavalcade of sports is on the air. Gillette presents the World Series. From Sportsman's Park in the Mound City, we bring you the fourth game in baseball's Diamond Classic for 1943 between the New York Yankees and the St. Louis Cardinals. This is Bob Elson with Red Barber and Bill Corum greeting you for the Gillette Safety Razor Company, your radio host at major sports events throughout the year. The Kentucky Derby, football bowl games, bannerline boxing bouts, and similar contests of national interest. Well, friends, here we are, just a short time, in fact, about 13 to 14 minutes, before the number four game of the 1943 World Series. Already, I might say, confidently, that things are tense here in the Mound City. We don't have a crowd like we had in New York, because Sportsman's Park will not accommodate a crowd of 68,000. However, we have a jam-packed crowd of 34,000 here in Sportsman's Park, and they could easily take care of 68,000 or 100,000 if they had room for them. But there is not that much room in Sportsman's Park. And so a crowd of 34,000 fans will see the actual playing of the number four game in the World Series. And I believe getting right into the news of the day, fans, it is the decision of manager Joe McCarthy to start Marius Russo, his left-hander, in this fourth game. Russo is the successor to the famed goofy Castilian, Vernon Gomez, as the key left-hander of the, of the Yankee pitching staff. During this year, his record has not been so impressive. He won five games and lost ten in 1943. However, he has been impressive in his last two starts. In fact, in his last ball game against the Detroit Tigers, he pitched a shutout, one to nothing, and allowed only two hits. And the boys tell me that both those hits were touched by the infielders. And so off of that last start, manager McCarthy is starting Russo today against the Cardinals, who are going to start Max Lanier, the five feet, ten and a half, 187 pound chunky left-hander who propels that baseball with considerable skill. His record on the season is 15 and seven. And as you know, he is charged with the defeat of the second game of the series. And so his record stands, a win, a World Series win in 1942 and a loss in 43. And Russo's record is one series win. There's already a lot of speculation about McCarthy's choice of Russo in this game today, and this might ultimately become one of the most talked about incidents of the 1943 World Series, because if Russo starts today and fails, and that should happen to be the turning point of the series for St. Louis, this could be certainly a talked about incident for a long, long time, as to McCarthy's wisdom in not coming back with Chandler. However, if Russo should start today and beat St. Louis, then this could be another stroke of that McCarthy genius that is already legendary in baseball circles. Now, Bill Corham has a lot more news for you, so I'm going to get right into the actual uh, batting order and lineup for the ball game today. By the way, the facilities and services of the baseball commissioner, the National and American Leagues of Professional Baseball Clubs, the St. Louis National Baseball Club, and the American League Baseball Club of New York have been furnished to War Relief and Service Fund Incorporated, which is conducting this game. And the baseball commissioner, leagues, and clubs are acting as agents for War Relief and Service Fund Incorporated in conducting this game. Speaking about the baseball commissioner, Judge Landis, he just came into his box right down below our booth here to the left. And his guest today is Captain Robert Emmett, the commanding officer at the Great Lakes Naval Training Station. One of the country's outstanding fans and a man who up at Great Lakes uh, sees to it that the boys up there in training get all the entertainment and athletics possible for them while they're at the Naval Training Station. Now here is the lineup for the ball game today. For New York, Stainback, center field. Corsetti, shortstop. Johnson, third base. Keller, left field. As I'm giving you this lineup, you can probably hear the park announcer calling it out up here in the press box. Number five will be Gordon at second base, batting fifth. Dickey, catching. Etten, first base. Lindell, right field. And the pitcher will be Marius Russo, a left-hander, who, by the way, stands six feet one. He was born in Brooklyn in 1914. Now for the Cardinals. Klein, second base. Harry Walker, center field. Musial, right field. Walker Cooper, catching. Karaski, third base. Sanders, first base. Litweiler, left field. Marty Marion will be at shortstop, and the pitching will be handled by Chucky Max Lanier. So, friends, there is a setup of the number four game of the World Series, and here is Bill Corm coming into the chair next to me to our mutual microphone with his customary, colorful, pre-game story 
of just exactly what he sees out here and what you may expect to see in this number four game of the World Series. Come in, Bill Corham. Thank you, Bob, and good afternoon, baseball fans everywhere. Particularly those of you in the service of our country who are playing in the real World Series and writing the finest chapter in the history of the world. We see from the papers that our boys and also girls, if they are fans, and many of them are, in Africa and Italy, are going to get this fourth game of the 40th World Series in complete detail. General Eisenhower, who once was a pretty fair ball player himself, by the way, wanted it so, and we hope the troops will enjoy every minute of it. So we hereby dedicate the broadcast to this most crucial game between the closely matched St. Louis Cardinals and the New York Yankees to all those in the overseas service from this nation where baseball is the beloved national pastime. Speaking of General Eisenhower as an athlete, did you ever know that six members of the 1915 West Point baseball team now hold the rank of Major General or higher in active service? That one is a full colonel and one a lieutenant colonel, and only one of the nine regulars is no longer in the service. That, from a military standpoint, was quite a ball team, wasn't it? General Omar Bradley, a Missourian, was the star of that 1915 outfit on the plane, and the only reason that General Eisenhower was not on the team was that he had hurt his knee the previous autumn in a football game with Yale. But I know it's today's game between the Yanks and Cards that you want to hear about. Well, if my guess after seeing 24 World Series is worth anything, this game is it. In every World Series, as in every individual game, there comes a break. The point where it is won and lost. If my guess is right, this fourth game, with the Yankees leading at two victories to one as it begins, will be the tell on the series. The Cardinals must win today, or they will be playing sudden death baseball with a Joe McCarthy man tomorrow and in every other game until the series is finally decided. Playing sudden death ball with the Yankees in three successive games is nobody's idea of a good time. And that's pretty obvious, of course. A two-game deficit in a best four out of seven game series is a mighty high hill to climb. Of course, the cards might do it. They're a game outfit, and anything can happen in baseball. But I really believe this is a game they must have if they expect to retain the world championship they won so gloriously last fall. Naturally, Billy Southworth knows that, too. That's why he's shooting the stout-hearted and stout Max Lanier of Denton, North Carolina, back at the big boys from the Bronx. I had breakfast with Max the other morning. At least I had breakfast while he was having his lunch. I never cared much for early rising since I used to have to milk the cows up the Missouri River here at Peace in Cooper County. Lanier had a pretty heavy cold at that time. However, he told me a few minutes ago down on the field that he felt okay, and when he feels okay, he's a tough pitching man to wrangle. As for Marius Russo, who is a Yankee pitcher and equally left-handed, although a couple of inches taller and a shade heavier than Max, he's like the off-mentioned little girl with a curl. He couldn't get anybody out this spring due to a sore arm that has dogged him practically throughout his career. And then suddenly, just before the season ended, he got as hot as a pit pistol back in Papa. Marius was born in Brooklyn and now lives on the outskirts of that stable borough of home. He may be right this afternoon, as he is when he has his stuff and turn out to be the best pitcher in what has been up to now a well-pitched series on both sides. Or he may get shelled out quickly. Off his record, Russo isn't as steady or safe as the stocky cardinal bartender who seldom turns in a bad performance. But why make guesses? We're going to see what really happens in a mighty few moments now. Russo is 29 and hasn't pitched in a World Series game since October the 4th, 1941 in Brooklyn, when he beat the Dodgers 2-1 to and gave up four hits. His record this season, as Bob told you, is 5-10. and ten. That is five victories against 10 defeats. This is the first time McCarthy has pitched his southpaw against the Cards in the series last year or this. I think the Cardinals are going to have to look out for that fellow Bill Johnson, the Montclair Mauler, leading both teams at bat with a 417 average for the three games and playing ball as ball of steel. This freshman third baseman has been all over the outstanding individual player of the series today. The Cards had better stack themselves against him. He's a good young ball player. I see a lot of the old gas house gang and old-time Cardinals down there on the field and talked to some of them before I came up. Howie Follett, not a gas houser, but of this year's team, came in here for one day, all the way from Utah, got put off three planes to rally around the Cardinal standard here this afternoon, but finally made it at 12 o'clock just in time for the game. Then at Johnny Beasley, who pitched in batting practice. Terry Moore and Jimmy Brown, the two captains of the Cards. Terry last year and Jimmy Brown of this year's team until he went into the service. 
Old Sonny Jim Bottomley and Tommy Thevenot of the 1926 team, the first St. Louis champion Cardinals. Harnsby's outfit. Tex Carlton, who won uh, that 16-inning game I'll never forget in the polo grounds from Hubble. Here's a little note for you. Dickey sets a new record in this game for one player with one team is 37. Roos was 36. Freak played in 50, but those were with the Giants and the Cards. So today, Dickey sets a new record. And now, I'm going to turn you over to the fella, uh, my cousin Red from Flatbush, Red Barber, who will call the first four and a half innings of this game play-by-play. Red Barber, come in, Red. Well, uh, Bill, coming out from New York on the baseball special the other night, I heard you tell Max Lanier and Stan Musial something very interesting about Gillette Steel. As we both know, Red, it's the finest the world has ever produced. And to get along with the story, folks, Gillette specifications are so exacting that its metallurgists purchase steel... Redhead getting back, and it uh, looks like this ball game is going to get underway a minute or two sooner than uh, scheduled. And uh, before we go any farther, before Max and the Eric and his last warm-up pitch and walk to the mound, we wish to pause now for station identification. This is Mutual. This is WGN, the voice of the people, Chicago. Now we're back behind home plate at Sportsman Park, St. Louis, the only major league ballpark that is west of... The Mississippi River. As Bob told you a quarter of an hour ago, needless to relate, yet we are happy to do so. There are no vacant seats, and there are many thousands standing around. The umpires are going over the ground rules, and they are rather numerous here at Sportsman's Park, St. Louis. There's a big roar as the Cardinals go out to take the field. The umpires, Bill Stewart of the National League, will be working balls and strikes, acting as umpire in chief today, back of the plate. At first base of the American League, Eddie Rommel. Means written of the National League, who still has a bad finger from that uh, little episode on the train coming out when he uh, lost and then recovered, uh, rather forcibly, his money. And uh, then of the American League at third base is Joe Rue. The ultimate, Conlon of the National League and Trip Grass of the American. The ground rule discussion still carries on with manager Southway and his captain, Walker Cooper, the catcher, up there. And Art Fletcher is the sole figure representing the Yankees, as usual. Lanier is on the mound, ready to go, just waiting for the ground rules conference to finish. His catcher, of course, uh, is standing there still in the confab. He's the captain, has an earbud into all this. At first base is Ray Sanders. At second, Luke Klein. At shortstop. Marty Marion, called by the trade slats. And at third base is George Karowski. We talked to George, and uh, he, of course, is a non-committal sort of a fellow about anything approaching uh, personal injury. He is very much of a Spartan disposition. He said nothing about his bad neck, which he injured in that collision with Lindell in the last game back at the stadium. However, Billy Southwark told me later that uh, Karowski still has a very sore neck. The trainer worked on it a long time before the game got underway. In the outfield, in left, is Danny Laguala. In center, Harry Walker. And in right field is Stan Musial. The Cardinals have not made a starting change 
in their team outside of the pitcher since the series began. Walker Cooper is taking one or two uh, preliminary pitches from Lanier. The left-hander coming back for the second time. He makes the first pitcher to come back twice so far in this 1943 Fall Classic. The first game, he started at the stadium, and he lost it. He lost it to Chandler. That was the uh, 4-2 ball game. Lanier went the first seven innings, gave up four runs, of which two were earned. Gave up seven hits, walked none, and threw one uh, tremendous wild pitch, if you recall. He hit the ground. Hit Walker Cooper's mitt, hit his forearm, hit the point of his shoulder, and went straight up into the air, and that was the one that uh, Walker Cooper couldn't find. And Lanier had stuff in that first game and struck out seven. Now he's ready to go for the second time. Stepping in for the Yankees is staying back. Staying back, Rossetti, Johnson, Keller, Gordon, Vicky, Eppen, Lindell, and Russell. The game that uh, Russell previously appeared in the World Series was back against the Dodgers in 41, and that was the game that, uh, two to one, that Fitzsimmons uh, was hit on the knee, if you recall. Now when Neil looks down, takes the sign for the first pitch. The left-hander delivers. Low inside for ball one. And game four is begun. Stream back so far has two hits out of 11 official at bats. Right-hand batter. Sends pretty well back in the box. He's a slender fellow. Swings and hits a high, high foul ball that first baseman Sanders is under. He's waiting, and he makes the catch just outside the first base coach's box. One man up, and one man gone. Same back, fouling out to the Cardinal first baseman. The Yankee coaches, as usual, Earl Combs, back at first, and the third, Art Fletcher. Frankie Crosetti, veteran shortstop. This is a uh, historical game for Bill Dickey. This will be his uh, 37th World Series game of the Yankees. A new record in that department. First pitch to Cassetti is a curve, batting in for a call strike. Frankie moved up his way with front. Then took it. Half field around toward left. Then to pull. Vanier delivers. A knuckleball that is high inside. One and one. One ball, one strike. Infield is up a step. Straight away. Outfield swung around toward left. Big gap is right center. Left-handed pitches. There's a drive, which is hit right out into right center where Musial waits. And after taking two steps, he makes the catch for out number two. Put out for the right fielder. Two men up. Two men retired. And the third baseman, the rookie Bill Johnson, stepping in. Johnson, leaning it over the plate, wearing number seven. He's stockyish. Chokes that stick just slightly. They're pulling him to pull slightly around toward left. And here comes down. A curve that is low inside for ball one. Two out. No score. Top of the first inning. First game at Sportsman's Park, St. Louis. And they're pumping. Delivers a knuckler that is in there for a call strike. One ball, one strike. Vanier used his knuckleball on occasion last year. This year, he's used it very much. Men's at the knees as he pumps, delivers, swung on, and beaten foul down against the batter's legs. One ball, two strikes. Walker Cooper went down the line, retrieved it. Great on Prince Stewart examines it, throws the ball out. And a new one is put in. One ball, two strikes. Two men out, nobody on. Just the start of things. Johnson digs in. Yes, five hits so far out of a dozen at bats. Swings and misses, and he has struck out a high inside curveball. Max Lanier sets them down. One, two, three, and the Yankees take to the field. Wearing, of course, their gray road uniforms. The Cardinals are wearing their white trim with Cardinal red home suits. For the Yankees, as they go afield, a tandem alias Russell. Name is spelled R-U-S-S-O. And as Marius himself says, he wishes it called Russell and not Russo. Russell on the mound. Bill Dickey, back of the plate. The infield. Nick Etten at first base. 
At second base, Joe Gordon. Shortstop, Frank Crisetti. Third base, rookie Bill Johnson playing his first World Series. In the outfield and left, Charlie Keller. In center, George Steinbeck. In right field, comprising the Yankee picket line, is Johnny Lindell. When we said a moment ago that this is to be, this is the 37th World Series game that Dickey has participated in, it sets a new record. Dickey has now played in more World Series games with one club than any other ball player. In the last game at the stadium, he tied Babe Ruth's record of 36 Series games with one team. This is the 37th World Series game for Dickey with the Yankees, a new record in that department. The player who has participated in the most World Series games, but with two different clubs, is Frankie Frisch. He's been in 50 World Series games. Almost half with the Giants and half with the Cardinals. Here now is Luke Klein. First up for St. Louis. It's no score. The Yankees went down 1-2-3. That time to Russell delivers. Low for ball one. Billy Southworth, pushing back to third. Mike Gonzalez, pushing back to first. Russell comes down, three-quarter overhand and outside, four, ball two. Two and all. Now he is 6'1", 185 pounds. Born in Brooklyn, went two years to Brooklyn College and two years to Long Island University. Delivers over for a strike, and it is two and one. Take it down to give the sign. Luke Klein, smallish, right-hand hitter, takes outside, four ball three. Russell's behind on the first batter that he faces, three and one. It's a very excited crowd here in St. Louis. And that's still a second. Three-one pitch, over for call, strike two, just above the knees. Three and two. Russell pumps easily, once, twice, delivers. Klein swinging, hits the ball out toward right field. In comes Lindell and grabs it for the out. And Russell behind 2-0, 3-1, got the count 3-2, and then got his man. A line drives it to the right fielder. And it is one man up, and one man gone, last of the first inning. Harry Walker, a 10-hitting center fielder stepping in. This is the first Yankee left-hander to come at the Cardinals so far in this series, but Southworth is not changing his batting order at all. Harry Walker up there, clouding the plate from behind, using that two-tone colored bat. Russell delivers, and Harry takes low inside at the shins, a fastball, ball one. Bill Stewart just bouncing around like a rubber ball back of the plate, calling these balls and strikes. He's a very peppery, stocky individual. Russell delivers, Harry tries to butt, misses completely. That was a running bunt, a bid for a base hit. Didn't even touch it. One ball, one strike. One man out. Nobody on. Harry gets that cap set just right. He's very particular about it. Crouches, sets that stick above his left ear, takes an outside curve. Ball two. Two and one. The Yankees busily talking it up. Frankie Crosetti's voice shrill and higher than all the rest. The pitch is swung on as a high foul ball out into the right field stands. Two and two. Three hundred and ten feet along the right field line. The center field it is four hundred and twenty-five. Along the left field line it is three hundred and fifty-one. In other words, this is a park that favors a left-handed batter who pulls the ball toward right field. Russell working easily. Yapley comes down. Harry swinging, hits a foul back into the stands, just behind the Cardinal dugout. St. Louis's dugout is on the third base side. The Yankee dugout, of course, on the first base side. Russell stands to rear the mound, going for the pitcher's rosin bag. There's the left hand of pumping. Walker crouches. The pitch is swung on, tipped down wide up first base. Second baseman Gordon up. A nice throw and a nice stop in time for the out. 
The ball was a slow ground ball, hit into the hole between first and second. Eppen, knowing that Gordon could get to it, unhesitatingly went to the bag, and Gordon made the play second to first. A big round of applause now for Stan Musial. Had a great year this summer. People at St. Louis are mighty fond of him. All he did was up and hit 357 for the Cardinals. They play him straight away and takes a curve good for a call strike above the knees. Nothing in one. Musial has three for 11. Two men out. The pitch is an underhand side out ball that is lined right to second base for Gordon for the third out. Russo, an underhand crossfire. Musial landed right at Joe Gordon. Marius Russo, who won the starting assignment for the Yankees today, contends that the way that you pamper your whiskers, friends, has plenty to do with shaving ease and speed. And, of course, he's right about that. For a dry whisker is actually as tough as copper wire, and a man has some 12,000 to 15,000 of them on his face. Now, Marius puts in with me that the quickest, easiest way to soften wiry stubble is to use Gillette Lather Shaving Cream. And that's the fact, men, for this cream holds abundant moisture and keeps your beard saturated all the while you're shaving. Folks, use Gillette Lather Shaving Cream and enjoy shaving comfort that's real. While our armed forces overseas are receiving this broadcast simultaneously with you, they are given no idea that it is brought to them by the Gillette Safety Razor Company. This is because of Army regulations prohibiting mention of a company or its products on shortwave programs. For this reason, you'll notice that we are avoiding all mention of the sponsor during our running account of the game and limiting commercial messages to the periods between innings so that they may be cut out by the shortwave operator. Gillette gladly makes this sacrifice to guarantee an adequate broadcast to our men in the war zone. Charlie Keller, first up in the second inning, and when the air pitches down and away from him, low outside for ball one. Strong outfielder, two for 11 so far, digs in, and takes a call strike, and high over the outside. First man up in the second inning, we haven't had a base runner, much less a score. Keller's a type of batter who just overpowers the baseball. Sets and takes high outside for ball two. Two and one. Outfield toward right. This is the type of park in which Keller is particularly dangerous. A park with the relatively shorter right field area. There's a call second strike. Lanier came right back off the hands over the inside. And it is now two and two. Two balls, two strikes. First man up the second inning. No score. Max doesn't waste much time. Comes down. Low outside. Just missing. And it is ball three. Three balls, two strikes. Full count to Keller. Sanders is playing right back up against the right field grass. He's the first baseman to step in toward the line. Lanier pitches 3-2, and Keller swinging, hits a bounding ball straight to Klein, who takes the ball, throws to first, and Keller is out, second base into the first second. Klein to Sanders, one up, one gone, and the hitter is Joe Gordon. Right-hand batter. I feel around foot left. Gordon sets. He has three hits so far of 11 tries. There's a knuckleball that hangs outside. Ball one. Gordon pretty well back behind the plate. Deep in the box. Swings, hits a long drive foul that is coming close to the stands and into them. Midway out along the left field. One and one. You know, there is one person who is in the stands today looking on that, uh, well, he's going to feel happy no matter who wins, and he will have uh, a reason for feeling rather sad no matter who loses. I'll tell you about him in a moment. 21 pitch is high inside for ball two. That is uh, Ziggy Sears, the National League umpire. His son is the uh, Ziggy Sears, the second string catcher for the Yankees. In other words, Ziggy works in one league, and his boy plays in the other. 
A pitch is swung on as a high fly ball into left field. Underneath it is Lip Waller. Comes in one step, two steps, waits. He has it. Put out for the left fielder. Two up, two down. So far, we've had superlative pitching. Haven't had a base runner. Just the second inning. The Yankees, the visitors, here in this opening game at St. Louis, which is game four of the series. And here is Bill Dickey. Stepping to the plate for the first time as he is setting a new racket in World Series competition. This is his 37th World Series game with the Yankees. A 10 batter, Bill swings and tips it foul right back in the catcher Walker Cooper. That staggered the catcher there for a moment, but he recovers. Walker goes down, gives a sign. Dickey standing right off the plate. Lanier delivers. Dickey swings, hits it right back to the mound. Lanier grabs it like a big cat, throws to first, and Dickey is cut down before he's halfway along the line. Pitch it to first, and it is still nothing across. Well, while Russell is going out to the mound to warm up at the moment, I just want to toss in something more about Gillette Steel that I'm sure will interest you. It's not only the finest razor steel the world knows, but it is tempered to glass cutting hardness. And I mean exactly that. This steel actually is hard enough to cut glass. And you can easily prove it to yourself. Thus, today's Gillette Blue Blade, with the sharpest, smoothest finished edges ever honed, stands up for one quick, easy shave after another. In fact, it's the longest lasting blade there is and saves you plenty of money. So men, why not give your face a treat? It's the only face you're going to have. Try the blade that's tops for fellows like Klein, Gordon, and Walker, and millions of other tough bearded men everywhere. Enjoy the slickest shaves of your life, the smoothest and best looking. Marius Russell on the mound has just thrown down his last preliminary pitch to Bill Dickey. Walker Cooper. Given a huge hand as he steps in the batter's box, and he gets another hand as his name is given over the public address. He's the catcher and the captain. Big Connell up there, six foot two inch raw bone right hand batter. Russell pitches, fastball over for a call strike. Nothing in one. They are not playing Walker Cooper to pull. In fact, the outfield is about two steps back, round toward right. Apparently, they're going to try to pitch him outside, making hit to right. He swings and hits a foul back into the netting. Strike two. New ball in play. Walker Cooper, Whitey Kowalski, and then Ray Sanders. That order. Russell working deliberately. Goes back, picks up the rosin bag. Swings it for the moment and throws it away. Now he's ready to work. Delivers. There's a strike swinging, and Dickey drops the ball, picks it up on the skip, and tags Walker Cooper as he makes a break toward first base. So, you simply score that as a strikeout. As on strikeouts, the catcher gets to put out anyhow. That was a low curveball. It really had stuff on it. Kowalski gets a big hand. Cardinals are home today, you know. Pitch swung on as a high fly ball going out along the right field line. Over comes Lindell and makes the catch. When he was really moving, he ran completely out from under his cap. Fly ball in fair territory to the right fielder. Two up, two down. And so this great pitching predominates. Not a base runner yet for either side. Two men out, last half of the second inning. Gary Sanders. Tall, string bean type of hitter. Left hand batter. The cram to pull slightly toward right. Swings and misses going after a curve off the hand. Strike one. Russell pitches side on, low inside, and it is one and one. That's a good uh, cross fire that he has for left hand hitters. Because he's a left hand pitcher and he throws that ball from by way of first base steps out that way. Gives the left-hand batter the impression that that pitch is coming right into his ribs. 
Sanders swinging, hits one through the hole between third and short into left field for the first hit of the ball game. Sanders in an outside pitch just where it was pitched, right between third baseman Johnson and shortstop Cassetti, a ground single into left. This gives him his fourth hit so far in the series. This is hit number one. Either side, and results in the first base runner. Danny Littwala stepping in. Right hand hitter swinging from the end. Outfield a step toward left. Littwala crouches. That's all. Checks the runner at first. Delivers. Strike call. Over the outside. And high. Nick Hedden, the first baseman, holding the bag against Sanders. Throw. Swung on, hit down to third. Johnson up goes the short way, throwing to second to Gordon for the force. And Sanders is forced to second base. Third baseman Johnson to the second tracker, Joe Gordon. Back up Littwala has a force out. No runs. One hit. One man left. Four St. Louis in the last two second for the Yankees. No errors. And the second inning totals. No runs, no hits, and no errors for New York. No runs, one hit, and no errors for St. Louis. The Cardinals are afield, going into the third inning, and the last third of the Yankee hitting list of nine is swinging into action. Hatton, Lindell, Russell. It's Vanier on the mound, coming back for the second time. He started, went the first seven innings, and was charged with the defeat of the first game at the stadium. Near pitching, Walker Cooper catching. He and his brother returned last evening after their very sad mission of yesterday. At first base, Sanders, second line, shortstop Marion, and the third, Kowalski. Litwala is in left, center, Harry Walker, and in right field, Musial. Nick Eppin stepping in. Big, strong, left-handed batter. Stands with his feet close together. Completely open stance. Goes down into a severe crouch. Hatton has one hit out of 12 at bat. The near pitches. Call strike. Sharp curve over the outside. The left-hand pitcher works on a left-hand batter. Max studies. Works. Pitch inside up on the letters. One and one. The crowd, which for the first two innings, keeping up sort of a constant hubbub, now seems to be settling down. The pitch. Outside for ball two. High and wide. Two balls, one strike. And here slips his glove. Goes back to the rosin bag. steps in. The throw swung on as a high fly ball into very short left. Shortstop Marion signals he'll take it, and he does. Put out for the shortstop. One up, one down. Johnny Lindell gets a little bit of a solid reception, you might say, here at St. Louis. Sort of mixed. Sets himself for right hand hitter. Ball strike. Third ball just to the knees over the inside. Nothing in one. Johnny didn't stick the like to call on that. Step back out. A little bit on his hands. Now gets in. A throw is a knuckleball hit down to third. Karowski grabs it. Throws to first and Karowski throws Lindell out. Karowski to Sanders as it's two up. Two down. Not half the third inning. Great pitching. That's the story. In fact, the story so far, just one word. Pitching. Pitching by Lania, who's now throwing against the Yankees. Pitching by Russell, who is the starting pitcher for New York. Russell stepping in. 
We're doing a round of applause as his name is given over the public address here at St. Louis. He's a right-hand hitter. Lanier comes over, but too low. Ball one. Two men out. Nobody on. No score. Top of the third inning. Pitch swung on and slashed foul into the right field stand. One and one. Russell can hit a ball very hard. If you don't think so, you can ask one particular person, Fred Fitzsimmons. Dresser, who hit that ball back at pitch, if you recall, in the 41 series. There is a pitch just outside. Ball two. Two and one. Russell crouches. Stockish out, ball in the air, comes down. A knuckler that is inside the ball three. Three and one. Russell's gotten his orders about getting and taking. The throw, swung on, foul back into the stand. Behind first base. That's a full count of three and two. Two down, nobody on. Russell digs in. Bends at the knees in his crouch. Walker Cooper stays low. Lanier pumps, throws, low for ball four. And Lanier puts the first Yankee runner on in the ball game. Down, a knuckler that is inside the ball three. Three and one. Russell's gotten his orders about hitting and taking. Throw, swung on, foul back into the stand. Behind first base. That's a full count of three and two. Two down, nobody on. Russell digs in. Bends at the knees in his crouch. Walker Cooper stays low. Lanier pumps, throws. Low for ball four, and Lanier puts the first Yankee runner on in the ballgame. A base on ball to pitcher Russell. This is then uh, the first walk that Lanier has given up. As he went seven full innings in game one and didn't walk anybody. George Steinbach, who began the ball game, fouling out to the first baseman. Steinbach now has two hits for a dozen official at bats. Digs in. No score. The pitch is swung on, hit down towards second. Klein has to hurry, juggles the ball, and can't make the play. It was a high-speed ground ball. That is juggled. Klein couldn't make the play. He speared ball with one hand. The ball rolled up his arm. And it has charged an error against the Cardinals' second base. The ninth error that the Cardinals have made so far in the series. So, this gives the Yankees now a real threat. On that error, Russell pulled up at second base. Steinbach reached first base. An error charged against second baseman Klein. Frankie Crosetti, always dangerous. Veteran, right-hand hitter. Takes eight pitch low. Ball one. This is the closest thing to a threat. Runners at first and second. Two out. Top of the third. Lanier delivers. Crosetti swings. Hit the drive out into right. It is in for a base hit. Around third comes Russell, and he holds up, and the bases are loaded. Then there is a throw over to third base, cut off by Sanders, and Russell is cut off. Right there, Lemusio had his throw to the plate, cut off by Sanders, and when Russell took two on the turn around third, and the slow is getting back, Sanders threw in to Karowski, and Russell was out. The right fielder to the first baseman, cutting off the throw and relaying it to the third baseman. So it is still no score, and that ends the first half of the third inning. You know, friends, complete weather predictions are prohibited by government regulation, but we can forecast cold weather is coming. So right now is the time to prepare for your health and comfort during the wintry days ahead. Fuel, coal, oil, and gas is going to be scarce. 
And when you save fuel, you help add to the supply needed for fighting the war. And you help release manpower and equipment needed for the same purpose. Now here's how to save fuel for your country and assure warmth and comfort for the family. Keep temperatures at 65 degrees during the day. Don't heat unused rooms. Keep windows closed. Draw window shades at night. Shut off heat when weather permits. Keep furnace in top condition. Use less hot water. Remember, friends, fuels are weapons of war, so save your share. Everybody must do his full part, or a lot of us will be cold this winter. So save fuel in the simple, easy ways I've mentioned. Well, the number four game of the World Series is now going into the last half of the fourth inning, and before I turn it back to Red Barber, we're going to pause briefly for station identification. This is Mutual. WDN Chicago. Now we're going into the last of the third inning. The old redhead with you again. It is no score. And don't forget to credit Crosetti with a single in that upper half of the third inning. Crosetti single to right, and Russo overran third base and making his turn, didn't get back properly enough. First baseman Sanders took the throw from the right fielder through to third. Made the out. Here's Marion, first up, last of the third inning. Russo pitches a curve above the knees for a call strike. The Yankees took a great deal of time before they allowed Russo to get ready to pitch in the last of the third. They wanted to make certain he'd regained his composure after being knocked off at third. There's a high pop fly back of third hit by Marion, and third baseman Johnson grabs it for the out. Marion is retired, a pop fly to the third baseman. The totals in the top of that third, if you want to check them, no runs for New York, one hit, there were two men left, and there was one cardinal error. It was a base on balls, though, that began that. There's Ania getting a big hand from his hometown folks here at St. Louis. That is, his baseball hometown folks. His real hometown folks would be Denton, North Carolina. Right hand batter. Swings and hits a bounding ball down towards second. Gordon charges it up with it. Throws to first in time by five steps. O'Neill is out. Second to first. Two up. Two down. Fine. Got the Cardinals second batting around. The first inning, he lined out to right fielder Lindell. Right hand hitter. Had two hits out of 13 official trips. Russell left hand is the pitch. Low inside, down by the shin. Ball one. The outfield is a step toward left. Left hand of pitches. Klein swings at the high fly ball into left field. Kellogg goes back one step, moves over two, three, backs up another and makes the catch. That's all for St. Louis. Down with nothing across. End of the third inning, and the totals at the end of three innings. And Bob, if you will, check me on these, please, so we keep everybody listening in uh, absolutely accurately in touch. No runs, one hit, and no errors for the Yankees. No runs, one hit, and one error for the Cardinals. You check those, Bob? Right, right, right. Well, Bob, I'd like to have your observation here for a second. How have you seen these two pitches, these two left-handers? Well, Red, it looks like it's going to be the same story as it was in New York. Uh, another whale of a ball game. This, uh, as Red has already told you, friends, the accent is definitely in this series on pitching. Uh, we're seeing some wonderful pitching so far on the part of Marius Russo, who, as I told you in the color in the beginning of the game, was uh, sort of a question mark. Lanier is pitching his same steady ball game that you can expect from Lanier, and this looks like this is going to be a real ball game right down to the wire. Red, come in. Right over, Bob. For the fourth inning, it is Bill Johnson, Charlie Keller, and Joe Gordon. In other words, we're into the real tough, hard-swinging, hard-hitting section of the Yankee batting list. Johnson getting in. He's a great fellow for batting in runs in the American League. The rookie year. He's been batting them in this series, too. Takes the first pitch over. Slow curve for a call strike. It was Johnson's triple with the bases loaded. Really put the finishing touches to game three. He digs in. Right hand batter. Swings, fouls the pitch back. Johnson, like most of the game's uh, good hitters, is at his best when they are men on. In other words, when the ducks are on the pond, as they say at baseball. The Yankees have a saying back in their dugout. 
that when Johnson steps in the batter's box and they are base runners on, that uh, Johnson's ears begin jumping. Bill swings, bounces it back. In other words, he uh, is an entirely different hitter when they're men in scoring position. So the Yankee thing in the dugout is uh, little Willie's ears are jumping. One thing I think that makes baseball so colorful is the vocabulary that is around the game. Johnson swings at the high fly into right center. Musial is getting there. He waits. And the right fielder pulls it out. About 350 feet away. One up, one down, top of the fourth, but out for the right fielder. Here now is Charlie Keller, who beat a bounding ball to the right side and was thrown out second to first in the second inning. Keller is one of the strongest men physically to ever play this game. Digs in. Took that bat about an inch. Takes a call strike. Dot Curry will be outside. Both pitches are working very easily. Very steadily. Both of them have stuff. Both have control. And both know it. Veneer delivers. Fast ball, which is swung on and fouled high. Close back to the stands. Catcher Cooper comes back, and he can't get it. The ball lands two rows of seats behind him. Strike two. Keller. Picks up Cooper's mask with the handle end of his bat and puts it to him. One man out. Nobody on. Top of the fourth. It is no score between the Yankees and the Cardinals at Sportsman's Park, St. Louis. Game four of the series. Keller swings and is struck out. There was a half swing, but the pitch was in there either way. Charles is even unhappy. Then Dan visits his uh, Bill Stewart. Now he goes walking away. And that's the second strikeout for Anita, giving him nine strikeouts so far in ten and two-thirds innings pitch so far this World Series. That last pitch had seven on it. And here's Joe Gordon at a fly ball. That's Bill and McFarland in the second inning. Go for one today. Joe is 3 for 12 so far in the series. Pitch is high outside. Joe refused to chase it. Ball one. Two men out. Nobody on. Top of the fourth. No score. Brilliant defense. Brilliant pitching. Throw. All strength. Just flipping the inside. Right up by the hand. Gordon backs out of there. He's holding out his rain barrel, but caught it softly. Now he gets in. Vanilla nods to catch a Cooper's sign. Pump pitches. Knuckles. One on. Get out of the left center field. Gary Walker comes over, and he can't stay with it. Gordon is around first base. He's in his way for second. Rick Waller picks up, throws in, and it's a double drilled up the alley into left center field. Gary Walker stalled for the ball and got the end of his glove, the fingertips of his glove, just at the grass root because the ball came in. He couldn't hold it, rolled over a couple of times, and then Waller retrieved, and to Joe Gordon, it is a double. Too bad. Harry Walker really made the try. That is the number two for New York, the number three so far in this fourth game. Now with two men down, Bill Dickey stepping in. Lanier has to be very careful. Gordon at second. Ready to scamper on anything. The Yankees coming up for their second consecutive threat. After Lanier had retired their first eight batters. No score. Fourth inning, two out. Gordon at second. Dickey digs in. Lanier pitches and Bill swings. There's a base hit in the left center. Here is Gordon coming around third. He'll score. Harry Walker picks up with his gloved hand. Throws to second and it's a single for Dickey. And the Yankees go ahead... One to nothing. And Dickey is celebrating today 37th World Series game with the Yankees, which is a new record for the most number of games played by one player with the same team. Drives in. The Yankees first run. And these two hits have been hard hit. Dickey's went between shortstop Marion and second base itself. Single to left center. Up now is Nick Atten, who popped a short at first at bat. The Yankees a lead. One to nothing, Dickey at first. Hatton swings, it's a bounding ball back at second base. Flying up, trips over to Marion, the shortstop for the fourth on Dickey. That's the third out. And the Yankees in the top of the fourth inning. One run, 
two hits, one man left. And they lead the Cardinals one to nothing with St. Louis coming in for the last half of the fourth. And now while I've got the chance to pass it along, here's Tuck Steinbeck's recipe for the slickest shave that a man ever had. All you need is a tube of Gillette Lava Shaving Cream and your Gillette razor with a keen Gillette Blue Blade in it. First, wash your face thoroughly to remove oily film from your whiskers and give them a real soaking. Next, whip up a rich, creamy, moisture-laden lather. Lift your brush in water repeatedly. Work the lather in. Then just guide your razor. Don't bear down. Let it glide lightly and skim the whiskers off clean as a whistle. Fellas, this way you walk through tough beard one, two, three, smoothly, pleasantly. There's no drag, no pull. Your face beams like a kid and feels years younger. Now you see if touch formula isn't the pellet winner in your league. You ask for Gillette Lather Shaving Cream. Last of the fourth inning, Allie Walker, first stop. Follow by Stan Musial, Walker Cooper. Now Russell is pitching with a one-run advantage. The Yankees lead one to nothing. And the Cardinals, of course, Bill Corum, very uh, pointedly told you before the game began, the Cardinals feeling that this must be a game for them. Now hope this pop fish strike back. Well, we'll see. Allie Walker digs in, swings and hits a high fly ball into left field, teller under it, and makes the catch about 10 yards inside the line. Harry Walker out, fly ball, two left fielder Charlie Keller of the Yankees, going after the first pitch, the last the fourth. And now here's Stan Musial, whose line drive was grabbed by second baseman Gordon in the first inning. That feels straight away on Stan. Presso delivers, low inside of the knees, for one. Musial has a habit of winding up for that wood. And he brings that back there very still just before he swings. Crouches and takes low. Ball two. The reason Stan likes to wind up, and it's uh, an art of Elon Patters, is that he feels that it loosens his arm muscles. The pitch over for a call strike. Good one. Russell will pitch overhand, will pitch three-quarter overhand, will pitch side arm, and then will come down three-quarter underhand. Delivers, there's a side arm, and it's fouled on top of the stand alongside left field. Right two, two and two. All the foul balls that are hit into the stands are handed to ushers, and the ushers put them in the proper receptacles. One is at each dugout, and the next time those balls are used, will be used by service teams. Two and two to Musial, one out, swings and beats the ball slowly down towards third. Dickie will have to hurry, the throw is not in time, and Musial beats it into the ground, halfway to third base, and beats it out easily for a single. Very fast. Dr. Dickey handled the play, handled it perfectly, but didn't have a chance to stop it. So that puts the tying rod at first base for St. Louis. One out, last the fourth inning. Yankees lead one to nothing. Walker Cooper, the catcher, steps in. The outfield is back toward right. The biggest hole is left center. Walker swings, hits the ball out to right field, and Lindell comes on to make a nice catch to throw it to first base, but Musial gets back just in time. That Lindell really threw for right field, a high strike. The Walker Cooper's hard line drive is caught by the right fielder. Two gone. Last for the fourth inning. George Karowski stepping in. Right hand batter. The Yankees are ahead. One to nothing. Two out for the Cardinals. Last for the fourth. Van Musial, who can fly, leading down off first. Throw to first. Out in time. Eppen returns. Wood left. Kalowski swings, hits the ball, and Gordon, a great one-handed catch of a low line drive for the out. Joe Gordon took a base hit away from Kalowski and absolutely prevented news of going around the third base. Nice catch by second baseman Gordon. No run. One hit. One man left. And at the end of uh, four innings, it is one run which is earned. Three hits. And no errors for the Yankees. No runs. Two hits. And one error for St. Louis. 
For the fifth inning, Johnny Lindell and Pitcher Russell, followed by lead offer, George Steinbeck. On the Cardinals of the field, it is Ania on the mound. Walker Cooper is battery mate. The infield is Ray Sanders at first. Second, Rue Klein. Short stop, slash Marion. And at third, Whitey Karowski. The outfield, in left, Danny Litwala. In center, Harry Walker. In right, Stan Musial. The umpires, once again, back of the plate, Bill Stewart. First base, Eddie Rommel. Second base, Dean Zrieden. And at third, Joe Rue. Johnny Lindell stepping in. All right hand batter. Outfield toward left. And the pitch low. Third ball low outside. Ball one. Bonilla takes a long time getting the sign. Nine delivers. There's a foul back onto the screen. Out of play. One and one. Steps in. Cooper stays low, back in the plate. The pitch is strike two. A half swing, the pitch in there anyhow. There's a knuckle up, and this knuckle ball that Lanier throws, he throws it just as hard as he can. It's a power pitch. It's not one of these slow, soft ones. In other words, the break isn't very big, but it is sharp. Bill crouches, the pitch, high inside, fastball, 2-2. Two -two. First man up in the fifth inning. And yes, that is, works, just outside by a take. All three, with another knuckle. Three and two. Max gets a little dust there with his spikes. He's ready. The tender puffing. Comes down. Strike three swinging. Third ball. He struck him out and hung up his third strikeout victim. One up. One gone. Half of the fifth. Here is Pitcher Russell. Right hand batter. And a good hitter among pitchers who drew the base on balls in the third inning with two out, and thus became the first Yankee base runner of today. Russell sets. Takes a curve good for a call strike. Bending just above the knees. Outfield feel back toward right. They're not playing Marius to pull. One to nothing. Save the Yankees. One man out for them. Nobody on the fifth inning. As a line drive hit along the right field line, it is in for a base hit and goes back up against the board. Russell turns to the left at first. Musial chases the ball. Russell holds up at second standing with a double. And Marius Russell promptly belts the two-banger. Right out along the right field line. And this was well hit. Right on the nose. That's hit number four. New York. Now with one man out. Russell's in scoring position. Top of the order is up. Train back, followed by Rossetti. Bonilla takes a look back at second. Now delivers. Swing back swings. It's a high pop fly back to first. Sanders under it in foul ground and makes the catch just the shade in foul ground. Two steps behind first base. Two out. Top of the fifth. Here now is Presetti. Right hand batter. Two men away. The Yankees threatening for the third straight inning. They cashed their second threat. Last inning in the fourth when they got the game's only run. The Yankees leading one to nothing.
Lanier working very coolly. Digs in. Veteran Cusetti. Leans over the plate. Swings. Hits the ball along the right field line. It's coming down foul. Untouched for a long first strike. Cusetti standing to one side. Putting his hands together. All set. Just that stick about two inches. The throw. Swung on and missed. A low curveball for strike two. Down in the St. Louis bullpen, Harry Brackeen, little rookie left-hander, such a good fielder that they call him the cat on his own ball club, is beginning to warm up. First bullpen activity of game four. Harry Brakeen of St. Louis. But he is throwing very easily, but steadily. Chris to the plate. Low for ball. One. One and two to Cresetti. Two out. Russell with a ringing double to the right field corner. Leading down off second. He's been very much a factor. This Yankee pitcher. Sound pitching. He's received the walk. And uh, has doubled. Vanier delivers inside his knees, and it is two and two. Vanier working for the third out here in the fifth inning. Cusetti trying to get this run in and double the score. The Yankees leading one to nothing already. Max settles in position, delivers, strength three swing. No run, one hit, one man left. And before we introduce to you Lieutenant Bob Elson of the United States Naval Reserve, we're going to pause quickly for station identification. This is Mutual. WGN, the voice of the people, Chicago. Now we're back at Sportsman Park, St. Louis. Marius Russell is beginning to warm up for the last half of the fifth inning with his veteran battery mate, Bill Dickey. And here now is Bob Elson, one of baseball's all-time great announcers, who has received special permission from the Navy to be on this broadcast. And it goes without saying that Bob's uh, broadcasting fee goes entirely to Army and Navy relief. With a great deal of pleasure to you folks at home, and to you folks of ours a long way from home, and we hope this broadcast is bringing you closer to home. Bob out. Thank you very much, Red Barber. Good afternoon, fans. Nice going, Red. That was a swell job. I'm sure that the millions of listeners to this World Series game, as well as all of our servicemen in all parts of the world, enjoyed your perfect call on the first half of this number four game in St. Louis. Now, fans, we have a one to nothing ball game. And here is Saunders up, a left-hand hitter. He was going to go for the first pitch. A sharp breaking curve that broke away from a left-hand hitter. And then he let it go by. It's a call strike. Saunders starting for the second time in the ball game. Incidentally, the Yankees are wearing the traveling uniforms of sort of a blue-gray today, while the Cardinals are in white with red trimming. There's a fast strike right down the middle, right in around his knees. And I might say that this Marius Russo has a good sneak fastball. When he lets it go, it's in on top of you before you know it. Cardinals are trailing one to nothing in the fourth game of the World Series. Here comes the next pitch. Saunders swings and misses a curveball over the outside corner, shoulder high to strike out. Saunders went down swinging, and he really took a vicious cut at that ball, and now the Yankees cover that ball around the infield. So that is one gone. It's a strikeout for Russo. It's his second. He, by the way, has allowed two hits. Lanier has allowed four hits and has four strikeouts. Now the next batter is the left fielder, Danny Litwaller. Two for ten in the series, the right-hand hitter. He's hit into a force play the first time up, and there is a perfect strike. It's right across his knees. Johnson at third base for New York. Rossetti at short. Gordon over there at second. Etten at first. The outfield, Keller in left field. Staying back in center. Lindell in right. There's a ball that broke in very low, inside and close. And at the ball, makes it one and one. Bill Stewart is back at the plate of the National League. Rommel is at first. Beans Reardon of the National League at second. And Joe Rue of the American League at third. He was going to go for that, and he stopped it at the ball. Ball two. Makes it two and one now for Littweiler, the St. Louis left fielder. 
It's a one to nothing ball game. Max Lanier against Marius Rusto in the number four game of the 1943 World Series. So you see what a ball game this is. Rusto getting all set again. Here's the next pitch. He swings. There's a high foul. It's going way off here to the right. Edna's chasing the ball. He he made a beautiful stab at that ball. If he comes out with it, he did. He reached right over the rail. He the lower box. He fell out of that ball. He came out with it, although his arm just prepared from view. And that is a catch officially in the baseball rules here for the World Series. It was a beautiful fielding play by Etten, who is playing first base today, as in the previous game for New York. Went right over to the railing alongside first base, reached into the boxes, caught that ball backhand and hung on. Now here's the famed shortstop of the Cardinals, Marty Marion, the right-hand hitter. The first pitch he steps up on, it's a perfect strike. Right in around his knees, and it's called. The outfield playing him right on the beam, straight away. Staying back right in line with second base out there in center field. Third baseman Johnson in a few feet at third. Russell is getting his sign from Dickey. Now the wind up, and here it is, and there is a ball. It missed the outside corner, knee high. Dickey steps out in front of the plate, the ball back to Russell, who turns around, exposing a number 22 on the back of his blue gray uniform. The score, one to nothing. We're in the last half of the fifth inning at St. Louis. Marion steps up on another pitch and lets it go by, and it's a ball. It was way outside that time, outside about a foot, and it's ball two and strike one for Marty Marion. Two out and nobody on in the last half of the fifth. Billy Southworth coaching down here to our left at third. Mike Gonzalez over here to our right at first. Here comes the pitch. Marion swings. They foul. This one is out of play. It's in the stands down here to our left. And it bounds down in the aisle down there. And there is another baseball for some service team. Incidentally, Sportsman's Park is completely boxed in by stands all the way around. An uncovered stand in left field and center field. And then what they call here at St. Louis the pavilion in right field. It has a roof on it. And from the right field foul line into right center field, there's a screen from the wall to the top of the roof, and the ball hitting there is in play. In other words, it cannot go into the stands. It is not a home run. But along the line, out 354 feet out in right center field, the ball can go into the stands there. There is no screen. Here comes the next pitch, a two and two count. Marion swings a bouncing ball into left field. Ball up and fires it back into the infield. It is a base hit for Marty Marion. Puts him on first base, and that is hit number three off of Marion Russo. Well, uh, here is Chucky Little Max Lanier coming up at the plate. Lanier came through in the second game of the World Series with a very timely hit. There's a man on base, a man on third with two out. He had two strikes on him. And then he dropped a blooper in over the shortstop's head for a hit. He's batting now with a tying run on first base and two out. Here's the pitch. It's the strike. It's called right across his knee. Max Lanier has allowed four hits. Russell has allowed three hits. The Yankees have a run. The Cardinals have none. Here's the next pitch. Lanier swings a bouncing ball to the mound. Russell has it. There goes the pitch. He's out at first. The play going from pitcher to first base. And it retires the side. One man left on, and so in the last half of the fifth inning, the total's no runs and one hit for the Cardinals, and that is five full innings fans in this, the fourth game of the World Series being played at Sportsman's Park in St. Louis. The Cardinals, no run, three hits. The American League champions, the Yankees, one run and four hits. Max Lanier getting all ready. Here it comes. There's a mighty their run, for those of you who might be tuning in late, they scored their run in the fourth inning. After two were out, after Johnson flies to right and Keller struck out, Gordon doubled. And then Bill Dickey came through with a very timely hit, scoring the run. That so far is the only run scored in the ball game. Already I've heard some speculation along press row up here at Sportsman's Park, something they're going to talk about uh, during the winter months ahead, as to whether or not it was good judgment on the part of manager Southworth to pitch to Dickey rather than put Dickey on first base, which would have put a man on first, a man on second with two out, and pitch to the weak-hitting Etten, who it uh, turned out, uh, made an out immediately after Dickey singled. That's just one of those many things that pop up that make good things to talk about for many months and even years after a World Series game is over. Now the first half of the sixth. First batter for New York is Johnson, the third baseman. He's been up twice. He struck out the first time. He fired out the second time. And the first pitch to him is very low. Ball one. The Yankees one and the Cardinals nothing. Johnson, a right-hand hitter up at the plate. Here's the next one from Lanier. A fastball, and it's perfect right across the knees. And it's a call strike. Max Lanier. Stands 
5'10 and a half and weighs 187 pounds. He's won a game and he's lost a game in his World Series record. Here's the next pitch, and there is a swing and a foul. It's out of play. It's into the stand down the first baseline, and it's ball one and strike two for the first batter for New York in the sixth inning. Borowski at third, Marty Marion at short, Luke Klein at second, Sanders at first. Max Lanier looking down at Walker Cooper, who is crouching down here with that red 15 showing up in the back of his white uniform. And the pitcher took so much time that Johnson stepped out of the batter's box, and umpire Stewart immediately calls time. The outfield playing the hitter straight away. When there winds up, here comes the pitch. There's a bouncing ball out to Luke Klein. Comes in fast. He's up with the ball. There goes the peg. He's out, and the play was not close. He was out by 10 feet at first base. Now the next batter is the Yankee strongman, Charlie Keller. A powerful boy, as Red already said. This fella has really a powerful build. He can give that ball a long ride, and he's a mighty nice fella with it all. The kind of a fella that you like to see succeed. Keller's been up twice today. He bounced out the first time, and he struck out the second time. He has three for 11 in the series. One of those, a long drive in New York that went over Littwater's head. Here's the first pitch. He swings, and there's a foul up on top of the stand here to our left. And it's a foul strike. The pitcher looking out onto the field from our mutual booth. Very high up here. We're right up near the roof. This is a double-deck grandstand all the way around the field, excepting in the outfield. And our mutual booth here is very high, much higher than... Uh, we were stationed in New York. Lanier getting his sign. He's already out there again. Here's the next pitch. Keller takes one in close, waist high. Max keeping that ball in on the handle, right in around his hand. But he broke that one in a little bit too close, and it's a one and one count. The Yankees lead one to nothing. Sixth inning. Ball game at St. Louis. Max Lanier getting all ready. Here it comes. There's a mighty swing in the middle. Boy, how Keller can swing. You know, watching Charlie Keller swing and miss, takes you back to the Yankee days of old. Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig and some of those fellows who look good striking out. Keller, number nine, wave that bat around. Here he is, right below us. Max Lanier getting all set again. Here comes the next pitch. Hit the ball. Just missed the corner, shoulder high. Outside. The ball two strike, two count. Max Lanier looking down at the catcher, Walker Cooper. Fielders keep up a constant stream of chatter. The outfield is swung way around to the right. Here comes the next pitch. He struck it down. Ball out on strike. The old knuckleball that time exploded right around his knee. And Charlie Keller goes down looking at the ball for another strikeout for Lanier. And Red, will you check me? I believe that is five. Five strikeouts today and gives Lanier 12 strikeouts so far for the series. That was a beautiful pitch, man. Beautiful. Here's Gordon up. Fly ball to left field the first time up. A double the second time up. And he scored the only run that's been scored so far in the ball game. Four for 13 in the series. The first pitch is a ball. Wide, waist high, and it's ball one. The outfield is playing Gordon as a left field hitter. Harry Walker, the center fielder, is way over in left field. And Danny Litwaller has moved over near the line and back near the wall out there. Gordon has tremendous power to left field. He can really give that apple a ride. Gets all ready now. Here's the next pitch. It's a ball. Waist high. It just missed the corner. And it's all two for Gordon. There's two out. Yankee half of the sixth inning. Max Lanier starting his wind-up. Here comes the next pitch. And there is a swing and a foul. It's out of play. It's going into the sands down the third baseline. Well, Joe McCarthy's decision to start Marius Russo in this fourth game of the World Series, which I told you before the ball game, might be a questionable move. It certainly turned out all right so far. Russo has been tapped for just three hits. He's walked no one, and he has two strikeouts. Ball two and strike one. Gordon swings and misses. That knuckle ball in around his knees. And this fellow, Lanier, really, really calls on that knuckle ball and puts plenty of assertion behind it. As Red already told you, he really powers that ball through there. When he gets it in there, it's a mighty, mighty tough ball to hit it. Ball two strike, two count on Gordon. Two out and nobody on. Ball game in the sixth. Lanier's getting all set again. Here it comes. There's a high fly ball in the center field that Walker should have no trouble with. He's going to his left. He's under the ball, and he has it to retire the side. And so, fans, in the first half of the sixth inning, it is a case of three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors. And the score at the end of five and a half innings is still the New York Yankees won the... St. Louis Cardinals, nothing. Come in, Red. 
Centrality is a big word to pull off in a baseball broadcast, but it has a lot to do with your shaving comfort. By centrality, I mean the precise centering of the slot in the Gillette Blue Blade. Obviously, unless the slot is exactly centered, the blade will not extend the same distance from both sides of your razor. Now, if one edge extends too far, it'll scrape, nick, and cut your face. If the other edge doesn't protrude far enough, it'll scarcely shave you at all. One factor in achieving slot centrality in the Gillette Blue Blade is this. The perforating dies are made by Gillette's own technicians. That means they're so accurately made that when two are placed together, they adhere tightly, as if glued. Considering the high standards observed in making today's Gillette Blue Blade, can you wonder why men like Nick Etten and Whitey Karowski and Frank Rossetti talk it up to their friends? Now this is Bob Elson talking to you again from Sportsman's Park. The picture is we're going into the last half of the sixth inning of a one-to-nothing ball game. A real pitcher's duel out here between Russell and Lanier. And here is the leadoff man, Klein, who has two for 12 in the series and nothing today. The first man up. The first pitch to him misses the corner by a half a foot. It's ball one. A lot of noise here in Sportsman's Park. 34,000 fans, all they could possibly get in here. The place is absolutely jammed to the rafters. Are making plenty of racket. Here comes the next pitch, and there is a swing and a shot. We hit ball back to the pitcher. Russell takes it and puts it over to Etten at first base, and Klein is out. Lou Klein tried to aim that bounding ball through the box. But Russell was in the way and stabbed the ball with his gloved hand, and so Klein turns out to be an easy out. Now here is Walker, the center fielder up. It up twice. Easy out the first time to the pitcher. Second time he flied out to left field. Score one to nothing. World's champion Cardinals, if they expect to win this fourth game of the World Series in their home ballpark, must do it the hard way. They must come from behind against the left-hander, Marius Russell, who is pitching a remarkable ball game. Here's the pitch to Walker, and there's one on the corner for a ball play time. That was a sweeping curveball away from the left-hand hitter. One out of nobody on in the last half of the sixth. The Redbirds fail by a run. Here comes the pitch, and there's a swing and a ground ball right at Gordon. He's up with it. There goes the peg. He's out at first. It's an easy play. Out by 15 feet. Two gone. Here's Musial, baseball's leading hitter. Has one hit in the ball game today. Gives him four in the series. And strange enough, with an average of close to 360, Stan does not have an extra base hit. Four singles, his effort so far in the World Series. Batting now with two out in the last half of the sixth inning. Also getting all ready. There's a swing and a bouncing ball out to Gordon. Should be an easy play. There goes the peg. He's out at first base. And it retires the side. The ball took a free cop to Gordon's right. Almost jumped away from him. But he snagged it, fired at the first base, and he got his man. Three up and three down. In the last half of the sixth inning, no runs and no hits. The score one to nothing, being in favor of the Yankees at that end of the sixth inning. You know, all over America during this month and next, men and women are working in behalf of the war chest. National relief and service organizations, along with thousands of local relief and welfare groups, must raise $125 million for the National War Fund. Now, friends, this money is seriously needed to boost the morale of our armed forces, to aid war prisoners, to relieve distressed people in war-torn countries, to help needy people in our own local communities, and the community chests of peace days are now war chests. And so fellow sportsmen give generously to the National War Fund when the call comes in your neighborhood. Don't rest on your oars because you've dug into your pocket for war bonds, the best investment in the world. Dig down deeper now to carry on the USO, United Seamen Service, the War Prisoners Aid Committee, and your local welfare organizations needing more help now than ever. Now, friends, this appeal comes only once a year. So open up, give all you can. Going into the first half of the seventh inning at Sportsman's Park in St. Louis. The first half of the seventh, the score one to nothing in favor of the Yankees over the Cardinals. And the first man to bat will be Bill Dickey, who drove in the only run of the game so far. A sharp single in the fourth inning scored Gordon. And it was the fourth in the series for Dickey. The first pitch is a call strike. He backed away from it. Umpire Stewart says, nope, that was a good one, Bill. It was right in on the corner, and it's called. The outfield playing straight away. Nobody on, nobody out. Seventh inning of the ball game. Lanier gets all ready. There is a ball. It's outside, knee high, and he evens up the count now at one and one. Max Lanier fidgets around with his cap. Artie Fletcher down to our left, coaching at third. 
Earl Combs is over to first. Here comes the pitch, and there's a high fly ball in the short left center field. It should be caught. Litwater is coming in. He's getting under the ball and has it for the out. Here's the first baseman, Etten. Up until today's game, he had one for 12 in the series. Been up twice today without a hit. Popped out to the shortstop and was out on another infield roller the other time up. Etten batting for the Yankees with one out and no one on in the seventh. A tense ball game. It's one to nothing. The pitcher's battle between Russell and Lanier. There's a swing and a ground ball right at Klein. A second. He's up with it. There goes the peg. Pieces out. On an easy play. The play going from Klein to Sanders. The Cardinals gather in back at the pitcher's mound and really pepper that ball around. Here's the right fielder, Lindell. For today's game, he had one for six for the series. The first time today, he bounced out to Karaski. And the second time, he was a strikeout victim. Lanier has allowed five hits. Russo has allowed three hits. Lanier has given one pass, and Russo has given none. Wind up in the first pitch to Lindell. There's a pop-up in the infield. Karaski is coming in under the ball. He takes it and retires the side. George had an easy out that time, fans. He moved in about 10 feet for that ball, grabs it easily, and it's a case of three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors. And now we're going into the home half, the last half of the seventh inning for the home team with the home team trailing. And this crowd of 34,000, and judging from the way practically everyone in the stands is getting up, are practically all Cardinal fans here at St. Louis, are standing up hoping that the home team will do something in the last half of the seventh. The score is one to nothing in favor of New York. The Yankees scored their run in the fourth inning. A double by Gordon, a single by Dickey after two were out. That has been the only run scored in the game so far. Well, wherever you happen to be listening to this ball game today, whether it's out in California, whether it's up in Maine or down in Florida, or in any part of the world, I sincerely hope that the game is giving you much pleasure. We all, the three of us, Red and Bill and I, are particularly happy news of the reception for the servicemen in all parts of the world. We're getting the broadcast just as you are, whether you're listening in Chicago or Los Angeles. They're getting it the same way in all parts of the world, play by play. Now we're going into the last half of the seventh. New York Yankees take that ball around the infield. They take their stations out there with Charlie Keller, the strong man in left. Staying back in center field. Lindell in right field. Johnson third. Presetti short. Gordon second. Etten first. Marius Russo on the mound. Bill Dickey catching, and the first batter is Walker Cooper, who has three for 13 so far in the series, a right-handed batter. First pitch to him, he swings, and there's a foul. It's out of play. It's up into the stands, off here to the right, and it's one strike. The Cardinals were depending on Walker Cooper, Harry Walker, and Stan Musial, and perhaps Karofsky, for some long-distance hitting during the series. But as in the case of Musial, Cooper, too, has failed to get any of that expected distance in his blows. Leading off now in the last half of the seventh with the Cardinals needing a run to tie and two to go into the lead. Pitcher getting all set. Here comes the next one to Walker, and it's a ball. A little bit low. Walker Cooper stepped away from that one and broke in low, and it's one and one. Nobody on and nobody out. Seventh inning. The score is one to nothing in favor of the Yankees. Number four game of the World Series. Gets all ready now. Here comes the pitch, and there is a ball. A lot of sink on that pitch. It didn't stay up long enough, and it's ball two. The opportunities for the Cardinals to catch up in this big ball game at St. Louis are slipping by. Russo just goes right along. Winding up now, here comes the next pitch, and there's a high fly ball into left center field. The center fielder and the left fielder are both after the ball. Keller is calling for it, and he takes it. A long slot of 380 feet into left center field. He was caught out there by Keller, and there's one goal. Yankees fire that ball around the infield. That's one out. You know, some of the experts were supposedly amazed at McCarthy's starting of Russell today. He'd already gone with three ace right-handers in the series in New York. But you know, Foxy Joe McCarthy did the same thing in the 41 series against Brooklyn. He let him look at some right-handers, and then he gave him a change of pace with Russell, and he pitched a four-hit ball game. Here's the pitch, and there is a slight call on Karofsky. It's right over the corner, knee high. It's a call strike. Whitey Karofsky has two hits and 12 tries in the series. A single and a double. 
comes the next pitch, and there's a swing and a bouncing ball at Johnson. A beautiful pickup. There goes the peg. He's out at first base by 10 feet, and Johnson made a beautiful pickup of a very hot smash, just a bit to his left, and he threw him out. And so it's two gone now, as the Yankees again pepper that ball around out there behind the pitcher's mound. Here's Sanders. A base hit the first time up, and a strikeout victim the second time up. Saunders has four hits in the series, including a home run. Here comes the pitch, and there's a swing and a miss. Right around his knees, a very sharp curve ball, and it's one strike. The Cardinals are batting in the last half of the seventh. They're trailing one to nothing. The Yankees scored their run on a double and a single in the fourth. Gordon and Dickey, here comes the pitch in close. Backed him up, and it's a count of one and one. The number five game will be up for decision here at Sportsman's Park tomorrow. Probably see Chandler against Morton Cooper. Now the wind up here at the next pitch. Saunders takes a mighty swing, gets a piece of that ball and fouls it. It flies over the umpire's shoulder and back to the screen. And it's a count of ball one and strike two. The red five in the back of his white uniform, a tall, slim boy, is right here below it. Marius Brusso on the mound. Slender, six foot one left-hander who was born in 1914 in Brooklyn, pitching a masterful game out there on the mound for the Yankees. Getting all set, ball one, strike two, here comes the pitch. He bounces one foul. It hits into the dirt to the right of the plate, hits him in the leg. Catcher Bill Dickey picks it up and fires it back at Russell. So far, the Cardinals have not been able to explode the type of hitting power that won the National League pennant for them. Here comes the next one. It's outside, just below the shoulder, and at the ball, makes it two and two. Cardinals are batting in the last half of the seventh. The Yankees lead one to nothing. Russell has given only three hits. Lanier has given only five hits. It's been a real pitcher's duel. Ball two, strike two. Here comes the next pitch to Sanders. He swings. There's a pop up. Back a short for Setti going back, getting near the ball. He drops it. He had his hands on the ball and dropped it. Back in short left field. Did you hear that yell from the crowd? It is scored as an error. Scored for study. That is the third Yankee error in the World Series and the first one in this ball game. They have committed three errors and the Redbirds have committed nine this way. Here's Danny Litwaller. Man on first base and two outs. That could be converted into a break if this fellow should follow up with a base hit. Then he went back on the grass for that pop fly ball. Seemingly had it, had everything under control, and then dropped it. And on first, and he looked water batting. Here's the pitch, and there's a bouncing ball down the first base line. It hit the bag. It's a fair ball. It's rolling way down the right field line. The run is not going to score, I don't think. They round third base and go back to third. It scored as a two-base hit. The run did not score. Sanders gets to third base. As Lindell raced in fast and picked that ball up, there's a man on second and a man on third for St. Louis, and a base hit was put the Cardinals in the lead. Now, fans, that ball was hit on the ground very sharply by Litwater down the first baseline. The ball hit the bag, bounced about eight feet in the air, and having hit the bag, the motion of the ball was slowed up, naturally, so it rolled slowly down the right field foul line. Lindell raced in fast, put that ball up, and fired it into the infield, and as the first baseman Etten cut off the throw, with Sanders just coming around third, they held him up at third. There's a man on second, a man on third, and I'm sure that Marion will get a pass. The first base is unoccupied, and they're going to walk in and load the bases, and then we'll see it will be Lanier's turn to bat. Now here is another one of those spots coming up in the World Series. The last half of the seventh inning, the bases are going to be loaded. It's a one to nothing ball game. What will Southworth do? Will he elect to have Lanier hit, or will he put in a pinch hitter? It looks from here as though we're going to get a pinch hitter. Johnny Hop, Tippity Hop, brother of the famed Nebraska football Hop, is going to bat for Lanier. Runners on first, second, and third. Strange Hop is over there at the bat rack. has gone back. Hop got up and went over to the bat rack. Manager Southworth waves him down and Frank Demery is now coming out. For 
Keene is out in the bullpen along the left field line, and Frank Emery, who bats right-handed, Hop thought that Southworth had motioned to him. He got off the bench and walked to the bat rack. Southworth immediately motioned, no, he didn't mean him. He meant Frank Emery. Frank Emery has spent considerable time in the National League. In fact, I can remember many, many years, and he played out in Chicago with the Cubs. He's batting now with the bases loaded. Marion was given an intentional pass. It was Russell's first walk of the ball game. And Demery could certainly become a hero here if he gets a hit in this spot. A hit, any kind of a hit past the infield would put St. Louis into the lead. Russell is plenty deliberate. Stands, the bases are loaded. It's the last half of the seventh. There's two out. The Cardinals have the best chance of the ball game. In fact, Russell's great pitching hasn't given them many opportunities today. So this is the spot right now with the bases loaded. Here's a pitch to Demery, and he swings at the first pitch. He was over the inside corner, right up around the shoulders. He fouled the ball, got it on the handle, and it goes back into the screen. Yankee left side of the infield. Johnson and Cressetti move in to say something to the pitcher. Bases loaded for the Cardinals. A great scoring opportunity if Demery, a pinch hitter, can come through. Donald and Murphy are in the bullpen down the right field line for the Yankees. And Brakeen, a left-hander. It's warming up down the left field line for St. Louis. This is the key spot in this ball game so far for St. Louis. It is one of the few opportunities that they have had. And a hit now would put St. Louis in the lead in this last half of the seventh. Base is loaded. Two out. A count of strike one on Demery, batting for Max Lanier. Russell takes plenty of time out there now. He's getting all set, gets ready. Here's the pitch, and Demery hits the bouncing ball to Johnson, who fumbles the ball. Johnson, who has played wonderful baseball in the series, and Johnson made just a simple bobble out of it. That is the actual fact of what happened. It was an easy ground ball, the kind of a ball that Bill could put, pick up, put in his hip pocket 99 out of 100 times. This one he didn't. It's the same thing happening to Russo here as happened to Lanier in New York in the second game. And you know, no great ball player, no matter how good he is, or no ordinary ball player, ever gets by a career without making an occasional miscue in a spot where, it's, where it hurts. Now, that just happened to a great young ball player. When I say great, you can take a pencil and underline it. Johnson is just that, this young third baseman of the Yankees. Ernie White is going to run for Demery. Demery hit a ground ball just to Johnson's left. It was just a case of stepping over just a foot or two and picking up the ball. But he bobbled it. It is scored as an error. It is the second error in the ball game for New York in their fourth in the series. Ernie White who pitched a beautiful ball game in last year's World Series, is going to run for Demery. And now the game is going to be delayed for a while. The boys out in the stands in left field and center field were so excited watching that tying run come in, which has tied this ball game up at one and one in the last half of the seventh, that they started to throw everything available onto the field. Some scorecards, some bottles, and so on. And I think while they're cleaning up the debris out there, that this would be an awfully good time to have our mutual stations come in and identify themselves. If you're listening, friends, to the broadcast of the number four game of the 1943 World Series, and what a ball game it is. This is Mutual. This is WGN, the voice of the people, Chicago. Now this is Bob Elson back at Sportsman's Park, and the boys are out in left field and center field with the basket. I'm going to ask Red Barber to come in here just a second. Red, well, wouldn't you sort of compare that bobble that I did on Johnson with what happened to Lanier in that ball game in New York? Uh, Bob, that was the, exactly the thought I had. I was going to say that baseball uh, has a basic expression that everything evens up. And so right here in the same series, uh, we have had, uh, you might say, a turnabout of a faulting of defense behind a pitcher. Uh, as everyone knows by now, Brazel was pitching magnificent ball for St. Louis in the third game and his defense faulted, not once, but twice. And this has happened this afternoon to Russell, who is pitching great ball. In fact, uh, this is not an earned run, but that's the way it goes in baseball. And uh, that's quite a scene out there, Bob, and I imagine it brings uh, back to mind a World Series game in 1934 at Detroit, doesn't it, when it had uh, the uh, stopped and the ground keepers went out there? Yes, that does, Red. That certainly uh, brings that uh, situation to mind. The famous vegetable throwing incident. Uh, 
of course, in these days of rationing, the chances are they wouldn't be throwing tomatoes and lettuce and that sort of thing. Uh, they're content with just tossing uh, bottles and a few scorecards. They didn't mean anything by it. I mean, it wasn't aimed at anyone. It was just the sheer exuberance over having the Cardinals come through in a spot when this ball game, and I say it very candidly, candidly, looked like it was well locked up by Mr. Russo. He was moving along in brilliant pitching style here today. The boys are still out there in the outfield with the baskets, but they have the debris all gathered up, and they are now wending their way toward the exit gate over at the end of the left field line. Rakeem is still warming up. The bases are loaded. White is running for Demarie and Klein, the leadoff man. Now, here's a little fellow who is always dangerous. Klein. He hit great ball in the American Association before the Cardinals got him. In fact, he and my old friend Lou Novikov uh, went right down to the last day of the season, practically tied for the batting championship of the Association. Lou had a big day the final day and won the championship over Klein by something like a point. So this little fella can really hit that ball. The bases are loaded. It's a tied ball game. It's one and one, last half of the seventh. There's still three men on. There's two gone, and Klein is going to bat just as soon as they're ready. And it looks like they're just about ready now. Russell's getting all ready. Here's the pitch, and there's a bounce. Bouncing ball to Gordon. Nice play, and it is out of second base for a force out. Gordon to Presetti to retire the side, and three men are left on the bases. That ball was hit sharply just to the pitcher's left, almost through the box. Gordon skidded over, came up with that ball, and clipped it to the shortstop to get a force play at second and to retire the side. And so at the end of seven innings, the ball game is all tied up at one and one, and that ends the seventh inning. Come in, Red. Within recent weeks, our men and our armed forces all over the world have been receiving Gillette blades in a new and distinctly different-looking package. Khaki and green colors distinguish the special camouflage package intended for soldiers and sailors. These blades, available only at post exchanges, ships, service stores, and similar outlets, are of true Gillette quality in all respects. That means they fit the Gillette razor precisely, are extra keen, extra durable. Also, they give you the kind of shaving speed and ease that makes a man look his best and feel refreshed. In order that our armed forces overseas may receive this broadcast simultaneously with you, the Gillette Safety Razor Company is eliminating all mention of the company name or its products during the course of play. Our short commercial messages are confined to between inning intervals, and these are deleted by the Army in accordance with government regulations forbidding sponsor credit. Now this is Bob Elson talking to you again from Sportsman's Park. Speaking of those servicemen, we certainly hope they're enjoying this broadcast of the fourth game of the World Series, wherever they happen to be listening. Well, Harry Brookeen, a wiry left-hander, is out there on the mound getting in his practice throws, and he is making his third appearance in this 43 World Series. The cat, as Red calls him, has done some very effective relief work, and he's being rewarded with a very crucial spot in this fourth ball game. Uh, the nickname the cat is certainly well hung on this fellow. He really jumps around out there in that box, and uh, for a batted ball in the infield, he's right on top of everything. He's a very, very nimble gent, and very foxy at pulling that baseball toward the plate. Now, the first man to face him, in the uh, inning is going to be the pitcher, Russo, who has a double to his credit the last time up and takes the first one in close for a ball. This is the first half of the eighth inning, the fourth game of the World Series, and it's tied at one all, one and one. Rakeem, a left-hander, is on the mound. Remember Lanier was taken out for a pinch hitter, Frank Demarie. Here comes the pitch, and he swings and hits one safely down the left field line. It's going all the way to the wall. I'll say that fellow can hit that ball. It's going to be a double. He's going into second base and goes in standing up. A two-base hit by Russo down the left field line. Besides being a mighty, mighty fine pitcher, he can really hit that ball. That's a hit. Off of Rakeen. Puts a man on second base for the Yankees in the eighth inning. And here's the leadoff man, Stainback. In this spot, and the Cardinals are already expecting it. They figure that Stainback has orders to punt to move this man along to third, where he'd be in a position to score on an error, a fly ball, or a hit, or anything else. Keen is getting all set. Saunders is waiting to race in. He punted, foul, out of play, back into the screen. And Stainback, seeing that Sanders was going to come in on that ball, race in, try to pick it up and fire it to third, naturally tried to lay it 
where it would do the most damage and where it would be the most effective. Close to the line, down the third baseline, in an effort to pull that third baseman off that bag to make sure that the man was going from second to third. Murray Dixon, the right-hander, is warming up for St. Louis in left field. No one in the Yankee bullpen. The eighth inning, the Yankees have a man in the scoring position, another double for Russo. Man out there on second base and no one out. Here's the pitch, and there is a bump, beautiful, in front of the plate. The play is going to be at first, and it is out at first. It was a beautiful bunt by Stainback, halfway between the plate and the pitcher's mound. And by the time that the cat, Fakim, got in to pick that ball up, he took a look at third, and sensing the fact that there would be considerable risk involved in firing it that way, he had to make sure of his man at first base. So, fans, it was a perfect sacrifice laid down by Stainback, a man on third with an important run for New York, and Crosetti coming up. He's been up three times. He flies to right. He's single. And he was a victim of strikeouts. Now the Cardinal infield is playing in. A man on third. A possible play here in view at the plate. Ball game is all tied up in the eighth. Fakin is getting all set. Right hand hitter up. There is a swing. A high fly ball to center field. He's going to score the run. Walker backing way up in center field. He caught that ball. Here is the runner coming in from third. There is no play on him. And the Yankees lead. Two to one in the ball game. fly ball hit very deep to center field. Hit so far back that there was no opportunity of a play at all. In fact, Walker just took the ball and lobbed it into second base. Now the Cardinals are waiting for the next man due to bat as Johnson, the third baseman, who has not come out of the Yankee dugout as yet. The Yankees have made six hits, and the Cardinals have had four hits. Here's Johnson coming up. Murray Dixon, the right-hander, warming up down the left field line. One, two, three, four. Five hits for the Yankees. Now the pitcher's all ready. Here's the first one to Johnson. Johnson hits the bouncing ball. Behind second base, Marion has it. There goes the peg. He's out at first base. Play from Marion to Sanders, and he retires the side. And so Russell's damaging double down the left field line to start the eighth inning which resulted in a score, has put the Yankees in the lead in this ballgame, 2-1. to one. And that ends the first half of the eighth inning. Come in, Red. You've heard what Lindell, Sanders, and plenty of other World Series players think about the extra ease and speed of shaving the all Gillette way. Now, why not see what slick shaves you get when you wilt your whiskers with Gillette shaving cream, either lather or brushless, and flick them off with a Gillette blue blade? Maybe you're a brushless fan. If so, Gillette brushless will make a big hit with you for at least four good reasons. One, it's speed shaving, makes it lots easier. Two, it's greaseless, won't clog razor or drains. Three, it stays wet on your face, rinses off instantly. And four, it has a managed scent and leaves your skin feeling great. So for extra ease and speed, shave the all Gillette way. Use Gillette shaving cream, rather a brushless, only a quarter. Now this is Bob Elson talking to you again from Sportsman's Park. The Yankees are on the field. We're going into the last half of the eighth inning of this ball game. Russo, who has not only pitched great ball today, but has had two doubles, is on the mound, getting in his practice throws, and the first man to face him is going to be the center fielder, Harry Walker. The score, the Yankees two and the Redbirds one, going into the last half of the eighth. The fourth game of the World Series played in Sportsman's Park in St. Louis before a capacity crowd of 34,000 fans. Fans are seated in every place conceivable out here today. They've rigged up sort of a... ...was a seat, which accommodate a... ...stump fires running the line to tell the top man to get off the field. He is serving his customers from the playing field rather than wind his way through the seats. Now they've got two of them out there, and the umpire's out there with them. And boys, Pop is okay, but not this way. He has just opened the gate and uh, pushed the Pop man out of view. Joe Rue just gave the Pop man the gate here at St. Louis. All right, naturally, the ball players are all waiting. The top man was the center of all eyes. Here's Harry Walker up. 
Cardinals have some power coming up from this inning. They can come through. Walker's been up three times without a hit. There's a ball that almost hit him in the leg. Ball one. Stewart. The umpire back of the plate. Doubles out ball one, and you can hear him all the way up here in our mutual booth. Nobody on and nobody out. The Yankees lead by a run. It's two to one. Here comes the pitch, and there is one low and outside for ball two. Now, Russo's control today has been well nigh perfect. One walk, and that was an intentional pass. Walking Marion when he got in that ticklish spot in the seventh. It's Bill the bases. Demery, a pinch hitter, batting for Lanier. Bounce to Johnson. Bill fumbled, and the tying run scored. The Yankees came back with a run in the first half of the eighth inning. And now the Cardinals are up to see what they can do in the last half of the game. Ball two is the count. There is a ball in the dirt. Ball three. Nobody on, nobody out. You fans listening who are pulling for the American League, don't get too worried about the ball three count. Russo does that occasionally, but as I say, he walked no one today, but he didn't walk on purpose. He gave one pass, and that was an intentional walk. However, of course, there's always a chance when you work the count up that close. 3-0, and there is a strike. It caught the corner knee high, right over the outside corner, and the, the batter knew it. He made no motion at all to start for first, but the percentage says he's got to take this next one. He can hardly offer it this no matter where it is. There is a strike over the inside corner at the letter. And it's a good pitch. The crowd yelled just a little bit, but the batter never said a word. He moved out of the batter's box, takes his cap off, and now Russell has worked that count up to 3-2. and two. Kept that pitch right in on the hand. Getting all ready out there now. Here is the next one, and there's a bouncing ball to Gordon. High hopping ball. There goes the peg. He's out at first base. Gordon to Etten, and there's one gone. So there you see, after three and nothing, a good control pitcher, Russell, got himself out of what looks like it might be a dangerous spot and retired the batter on a bouncing ball to Gordon. One gone. Here's Stan Musio up three times and has had one hit. Already, here's the first pitch. Musio swings, and there's a bouncing ball in the infield. The Johnson is going to fire. It's going to be very close. He didn't even throw it. It's a hit. The ball hit into the dirt to the left of home plate and bounced high into the air. You've seen that sort of a play many times when you've been to the ballpark yourself. The third baseman had no choice. Just stand there and wait for the ball to come down. When it did come down, Musio was only about five feet from first base, so Bill held it. It scored as a base hit. makes five hits for St. Louis, and now Etten is going to talk to Russo. Man on first base with the tying run, and Walker Cooper is coming up. That makes Musial's fifth hit of the series, although as yet he has not had an extra base hit. Cooper's been up three times today without a hit. He hit a couple of balls hard, but they were caught. Here comes the pitch, and there's a swing and a bouncing ball. Behind second base, Gordon! Cardinals have runners on first and second with one out. Hit number six off of Russo. Now the next man to come up will be Karofsky. Donald and Murphy are working in the bullpen for New York. And here time is called as the second baseman Gordon, the catcher Bill Dickey, gather around Russell out there in the center of the diamond. And St. Louis has two infield hits here off of Marius Russo that have this wiry, skillful, left-hander in a bit of a jam. In fact, the base hit would tie it up. Here's Whitey Karofsky up. You well remember the ball game last year when he was a hero of one of the World Series games. He's up there now with nothing for three today and previously with two for ten in the series. The second base umpire beams reared and wants to look at the baseball. He's standing back on the mound looking it over just to make sure that Mr. Russo is not putting anything on the ball but his skill which he's not. And he tosses the ball back to Marius, and we're all set to play baseball. Man on first, man on second, one out. Yankees leading 2-1. to one. The ball game is in the last half of the eighth. But you're getting all ready out there. Here comes the pitch, and there is a ball that's in close. In on the handle. Very close, and it's ball one. Musiala, fast man, is on second base. Walker Cooper with an infield tap through the infield, which Corsetti knocked down behind second, is on first base. The man up at the plate is Whitey Karofsky stocky little right-hand batter, and the pitcher takes so much time getting ready that Karofsky goes for the walk. He's outside the batter's box now, showing up that red one on the back of his white uniform, as he wipes his hands on his uniform. Now he's up in there again. 
Russo is getting all ready. Two men on. Here's the pitch, and there's a big swing and a miss. He went around trying to kill that ball that time and missed a very sharp curve ball in around the knees, and it's one and one. The Yankee outfield playing Karaski straight away. Staying back in center field. Keller in left field. Lindell in right field. Lindell playing deep, as is Keller. This fellow can give a ball a good ride when he hits it. Pitcher getting all ready out there again. Russo has his sign. Here comes the next pitch, and there's a drive down the left field line. It's a foul ball. A hard hit line drive down the third baseline. Hit about 10 feet foul. Did you hear the yell from the crowd? That was before it became certain that the ball was going to drop foul. When it left his bat, you could not tell whether it was going to be fair or foul. The ball was really tagged. Curve ball in around the knees, and it's one and one. The Yankee outfield playing Karaski straight away. Staying back in center field, Keller in left field, Lindell in right field, Lindell playing deep, as is Keller. This fellow can give a ball a good ride when he hits it. Pitch are getting all ready out there again. Russo has his sign. Here comes the next pitch, and there's a drive down the left field line. It's a foul ball. A hard hit line drive down the third baseline. Hit about 10 feet foul. Did you hear the yell from the crowd? That was before it became certain that the ball was going to drop foul. When it left his bat, you could not tell whether it was going to be fair or foul. The ball was really tagged. Ball one and strike two for Karaski. Third baseman of the St. Louis Redbirds. He's batting with teammates on first and second and one out in the last half of the eighth. The fourth game of the 43 World Series. Standing two games for New York, one for St. Louis. And this an awfully big ball game for both teams. Pitcher's getting all ready out there again. Here comes the next one to Karaski. Karaski hits another bouncer. This time it's obviously foul on the ground. Down the third baseline. And it is still ball one and strike two for Karaski. Fifth game of the World Series will be played here at Sportsman's Park in St. Louis. And all necessary succeeding games here in St. Louis. This place is jammed. Behind the ballpark in left field and center field and right field. People are up on porches and on the roofs of buildings. Every place possible to get a look at this ball game because the park seats only 34,000 spectators. Russell getting all ready again. Two men on. Watch it now. Here comes the next pitch. He swings, and there is a long fly ball back into left field. The teller is going back near the wall for it. Looks like he'll get it. He does. Way back near the left field wall. Karaski hit one that time, and Keller pulled it down about five feet from the wall. That's about 348 feet from home plate. And there's two gone. Karaski was really trying for these seats. That was a long hit fly ball into left field that Keller pulled down near the left field wall. Now there's a man on first, a man on second, and the first baseman, Sanders, coming up. Sanders, the first time up today, drove a single in the left field. Struck out the second time, and the third time he was safe on an error. He's batting now with a chance to tie up the ball game. He can get a hit and score Musial from second base. Russo's getting all ready. Here's the first pitch, and there's a ground ball to Gordon's right. Up with the ball. The play is at second base, and it's safe. He over his slid the bag, and he's out. Gordon threw the ball to Corsetti. The runner going into second base. Cooper was safe. He over slid the bag toward left field and was then tagged out, and it retires the side. Cooper was in there safely. He had the attempted force play at second base beaten. But when he overslid the bag, when he just rolled over the bag after getting in there, he couldn't keep his feet on the bag. He was tagged in by Corsetti. Fully a foot off the bag, and it retires the side. So that ends the threat. It is not scored as a hit, remember. Saunders does not get a hit on the play. It's simply a force play, a fielder's choice. No runs and two hits. The hits in the inning are credited to Musial and Cooper, and Cooper made that out of second base. It was a ball hit on the ground to the right of Gordon. Gordon had to go over pretty far for the ball, and it wasn't hit very hard. So by the time he came up with the ball, Cooper was pretty close to second. He flipped the ball to Cressetti. The play was beaten at second base, but then he overstepped the bag, his forward motion carrying him down to second base. He could not stop, and he was then tagged by Cressetti for the second time, and this time he was out. So we're now going into the first half of the night. Harry Burkeen is out there on the mound for St. Louis. The score, 2-1 to one in favor of the Yankees. Burkeen, a left-hander on the mound. First man to face him will be Charlie Keller. 
Been up three times without a hit. He struck out twice today, and he bounced out the first time. Albert Keene is getting all ready. Here's the first pitch to Keller. Keller takes one, a little bit high and inside, and it's ball one. The Yankees have made five hits, and the Cardinals have made six hits. The Yankees have made two runs, and the Cardinals have made one. There's a ball. It's inside very close. Backs Keller right out of the batter's box, and it is now a count of ball two on the Yankee left fielder. St. Louis outfield is playing him around to the right. Rakeen is winding up. Here's the next pitch, and there's a swing and a foul. Ball rolls on the ground, back of the plate, and it's ball two and strike one. It's the first half of the ninth inning. The Yankees two, and the Cardinals one. The Yankees scored a run in the fourth and a run in the eighth. The Redbirds scored a run in the seventh. Two to one. Marius Russo has gone all the way against Lemire and Brakeen. Keen readies. Here's the next pitch. There's a bouncing ball to the left of Klein. Can't get it. It's a base hit. It goes into right field. Keller's first hit of the day and Keller's fourth hit of the series. That is the second hit off of Brakeen. Now Marty Marion says something to Brakeen. Keller's on first base. Murray Dixon, the right-hander, is warming up down the left field line. A runner on first base for New York. And Gordon up. He's had one hit, a double, on which he scored. Dickey hit for a single after his double, and it scored Gordon. He's up there now, and the first pitch is inside and very high for a ball. Cardinals shift in hurriedly, figuring that Gordon is going to lay the ball down to move Keller to second base. And the chances are that is what he'll try to do. In a spot like this, where a ball game is very close, a run means a lot. And the Yankees will undoubtedly try to play for one another run. Here's the pitch. No, he crossed him up and swung and sailed a long one down the left field line. He hit that ball high down the left field line, and it evens the count at one and one. Even though he took a swing at that ball, St. Louis is still going to play in the infield, anticipating another attempted sacrifice. Yankees two and the Cardinals one. Runner on first base for New York and Gordon batting. Harry Bertine. Six-foot left-hander out there on the mound. Arms up in front of him. He gets all ready now. Watch it. Here it is. It is a ball. It just missed the corner, waist high. And it's ball two and strike one for Gordon. The great second baseman of the Yankees is batting in the ninth. He's had four hits in the series, three previously, and one today. Now time is called. Just as the pitcher was getting ready to go get all set to raise his arms up, over his head, there's no wind-up, naturally, with the man on first. But just as he started to raise his hands, the batter stepped out of the box. Ball two and strike one for Gordon. Here comes the pitch, and there's one way outside for ball three. And Cooper had to go way out to his right to get that ball. Now Burkeen has worked this count up dangerously to ball three and strike one. Man on first base for New York, and no one out. Ninth inning. Here's the 3-1 pitch getting set, watching that base runner. Here it comes. There he goes. There's a swing and a foul. Foul tipped that ball. It pops out of the catcher's glove and rolls on the ground to the right of the plate. It's ball three and strike two, and Rakeen walks in to say something to Cooper as the base runner, who is on his way down to second base, Keller goes back to first. Artie Fletcher coaching down there at third. Earl Combs is over at first. St. Louis outfield is playing way around to the left. Tomorrow's fifth game, it'll probably be Chandler against Morton Cooper. Now the pitcher has his sign again. He's all ready. Here comes the next pitch to Gordon. Gordon swings and misses. The play to second base, and he is safe at second base. Gordon struck out, and Keller is safe at second base on the steal. So credit him with a stolen base, and credit the pitcher, Bakeen, with a strikeout. Gordon went down swinging. The stolen base... Man on second. Dickey is coming up. Klein reaching for that ball down at second base. Was shaken up as Charlie Keller came in. And umpire Reardon down there at second is calling time, waiting for Klein to make the necessary adjustments out there. He says he's okay now and goes back to his position. Marty Marion at short. Klein at second. Horowski at third. Sanders at first. Here's Dickey up. And now they're going to give him an intentional pass. Dickey is going to get an intentional pass. Walker Cooper steps out to the left, and Burkeen 
going to give him a pass. Ball, it's way outside. Well, after the incident, which came up earlier in the ball game, with a man on second and two out, first base unoccupied, they pitched to Dickey, and he cracked the base hit into center field to drive in the run. The Cardinals decide now that Long Will is a little bit too dangerous. Keller out on second base, and there is ball four intentional to Dickey. Man on first, a man on second, and here is Nick Etten coming up, first baseman of the Yankees. He's been up three times today without a hit. Has been one for 15 in the series. It's the ninth inning of the fourth World Series ball game at St. Louis with the score two to one. Man on first, man on second. Keen getting ready to pitch now to Etten. Here it comes, and there's one very wide and very high for a ball. Couldn't have reached that ball with a broom. It was way high and outside. Larry Dixon is still warming up down the left field bullpen for the Cardinals. No activity in the Yankee bullpen down the right field line. Russo has gone all the way against Lanier and Harry Brickeen. The Yankees have an opportunity here in the ninth with runners on first and second. Here's the next pitch. There's a slow ball. He hits a bouncing ball in the infield of Sanders, who is making the play at first base himself. He is out to Sanders unassisted. The pitcher came over to first base to cover in case he was needed. The runners advance to second and third, and there's two gone. Man on second, a man on third, and here is Lindell coming up. Now, what would you do in this spot? Would you pitch to Lindell, an outfielder, with first base unoccupied, or would you walk him and pitch to Russo, the pitcher who has two doubles? That's one to mull over. They're going to walk Lindell. Ball is wide. It's wide. This might be an opportunity for some talking and some second guessing too in the winter months, but it is the solid thing to do. Regardless of whether or not Mr. Russell has four for four instead of two doubles, good baseball dictates that he draw a pass Lindell in this spot and that Marius Russell come up. And now here is manager Southworth coming out, and we might be going to get a right hander, Murray Dixon, in there to pitch. Billy Southworth is out in the center of the diamond. There's Walker Cooper out there. He's talking to Burkeen. Murray Dixon, the right-hander, a slender fellow, stands about 5'11 and a half or 6 feet tall, is in that bullpen in left field. Burkeen is going to stay in. The bases are loaded for the Yankees, leading 2-1 to one in the ninth inning at St. Louis. Big Sunday game, fourth game of the World Series, which we hope you're enjoying wherever you may be listening. Here's the first pitch, and there's a swing and a miss. A slow curve and around his knees, and it's one strike. Russo, plenty dangerous up there at the plate. He's been on every time. He walked the first time, he doubled the right the second time, and he doubled the left the third time. This is the fourth time. What will he do now with the bases loaded and two gone? Joaquin gets his sign. Here comes the pitch. Ooh, almost a wild one that time, and Cooper had to go into the dirt to stop it. Walker Cooper dove into the dirt to stop that pitch that got away from Joaquin. Evens up the count at one and one. Russo is batting right-handed. Here he is right below us, swinging that light-colored bat. Teammates on first, second, and third. A two-to-one ball game. Ninth inning, two out. That's the picture here at St. Louis. Now he's all ready again. Watch it. Here it is. There is a swing and a miss. He broke one over the outside corner, waist high, that Russo went reaching for. And it is ball one and strike two for Russo. Bases loaded. This fellow has walked and doubled twice. The keen on a spot out here in the ninth inning. Watch it now. He has his sign. There goes the windup. Here comes the pitch. He struck him out with the bases loaded. He struck him out with the bases loaded that time. He went for what looked like a knuckleball from here and around his knees, and he struck him out. And three men are left on the base. And so that is the end of the first half of the ninth inning. It is no runs, one hit, and two walks in the inning. And now we're going into the all-important last half of the night. You're listening to the broadcast of the fourth game of the World Series, friends, from St. Louis. The score, the Yankees, two and the Cardinals, one, going into the last half of the night. And while the teams are changing now out there, going out, the Yankees going out of the field and the Cardinals coming to bat, we will pause briefly for station identification. This is Mutual. This is WGM, the voice of the people of Chicago. Now, friends, this is Bob Elson talking to you again from Sportsman's Park in St. Louis. 
The attendance today, 36196 Receipt, $155,884. Attendance 36,196. Bill Corham in his summary and his highlights after the ball game will have a lot of interesting figures for you. Right now, the big figure is 2 to 1 on the scoreboard. The Yankees 2 and the Cardinals 1. By the way, you servicemen listening to this ball game today will be able to see a fine two reel motion picture of this ball game three or four weeks after the World Series is over in Europe and in the United States. The American League is making a two-reel sound picture which is going to be shown to the servicemen in the United States and every place else. First man to bat now for St. Louis in the last half of the ninth is Mittweiler, and he takes the first pitch wide for a ball. Ball one. Mittweiler cracks the double. Down the first baseline, there's a plane going overhead. Maybe you can hear the roar of the motors. Nobody on and nobody out. Danny Litwater. He gets a hit, you'll hear a roar. Russo getting all set. Here comes the pitch. Litwater swings and hits the bouncing ball out to Corsetti. There goes the pickup on the peg. He's out at first base. The play from Corsetti to Wetton. And it's one gone in the ninth inning. Here is Slats Marion coming up. One out. One out in the last half of the ninth. The fourth game of the World Series. Marius Russo has gone all the way and pitched a beautiful ball game. Now here's Marty Marion. Marion has walked twice today. He's been up three times. He has two hits so far in the series, including a home run. Here's the pitch, and there's a ball low outside. Nobody on and one out in the last half of the ninth. The last chance for the Redbirds. Can they do it here in the ninth? That is the question at St. Louis. Rousseau has gone all the way. The score is 2-1 to one in favor of the Yankees. Here comes the pitch, and Marion cracks the ground ball. A hit down the left field line. number seven off of Russo. And here is Fletcher coming out, and it looks like we are going to get another pitcher for New York. Arnie Fletcher is out there talking to Russo. A right-hand pinch hitter is coming out. bullpen catcher for the Cardinals all year long has made very few appearances in a ball game a right hand hitter is the choice of manager Southworth in this spot in the ninth inning Nairn he bats right handed number 32 in the back of his white uniform and here is the pitch and there is a bouncing foul down the third baseline and it's one strike Nairn a stocky boy has been doing practically all of the bullpen catching all year long for St. Louis a stocky lad who stands about 5 feet 10 10 and a half powerful looking build that's right-handed, and he can certainly be a hero, bullpen or no bullpen, if he gets a hit here in St. Louis in this last half of the ninth. Marion is on second base by virtue of a two-base hit. Russell getting all ready out there now. Here's the pitch. Oh! The pitch was inside very high. He fell away from it, and the ball hit his bat and went into the stand. The pitch very nearly hit Marion as he fell away, throwing himself away from the ball. The bat got up in front of him, and through no uh, ball of his, the bat was hit instead of himself, and the ball a shade off the bat into the stand. But that was a pitch right at him. Not intentional, of course, by Russo. He was just trying to get that pitch in there. And it's a foul strike. Makes it two strikes on Marin. M-A-R-R-O-N. And on second base in Marin, buddy. Still has that big one to look at. Last half of the ninth inning of the score. Two to one in favor of the New York Yankees. If you get all ready out there now, here it comes. There's a swing and a bouncing ball to Corsetti. The play is to first base, and he is out at first. Marin hit that ball hard, very sharply, but right at Corsetti, and Corsetti backed up, took the ball off a big hop, and threw him out at first. And so that puts it squarely up to Klein, who is coming up to the plate now with a teammate on second base, two out. The score, two to one in favor of New York, and it's all up to Klein. 
not known, been able to get that ball in the hole between Presetti and Johnson or any place else in the infield. It would have gone through surely because it had the speed of a bullet. Here's Klein batting. Here's the pitch, and there's a mighty swing and a miss, and it's one strike. What's Klein done today? He's been up four times and done nothing. He flied to right. He flied to left. He bounced to the pitcher, and he hit into a force play four times up. All that will be forgotten if he gets a hit this time by the St. Louis fans. Gets all set. Here's the pitch, and there is a fly ball into right field. Looks like the game is going to be over. Stainback is backing up. He caught it. The ball game is over, and the Yankees win the fourth game of the World Series by a score of 2-1. to one. So Marty Marion, who came through with a double in the ninth inning, is left out there on second base as Naren bounces out higher to Crescetti. Klein flies deep to center field, and the ball game is over and chalk it up as a win for New York. And an outstanding victory out here for Marius Russo, the choice of manager McCarthy, and this left-hander came through with a beautifully pitched ball game. The final score, New York 2 and the Cardinals 1. And, of course, that puts the issue squarely up to St. Louis now. To do it, they have to win in three straight games. It stands three for New York and one for St. Louis. Now this is Bob Elson, who's had the pleasure of bringing you the last half of the ball game. Bill Coram, with his colorful highlights of today's game, as seen from the press box, will take over the microphone in another moment or two. But first, here's Red Barber. And before Bill gets going here, I want to nail down this one fact about today's Gillette Blue Blade. It's simply this. In all the world, there isn't another blade as sharp, easy shaving, or long-lasting. Folks, the manufacturer of the Gillette Blue Blade requires unusual technical knowledge. Heading this department and that working on every phase of production at shaving headquarters, you'll find graduates of leading technical institutions. There are specialists in metallurgy, chemistry, physics, mechanics, electricity, even the newest of sciences, electronics. I tell you this to stress that nothing is spared to make today's Gillette Blue Blade the finest money can buy. The blade that gives you the most refreshing, best-looking shaves a man can have. Won't you try it? Before the ball game got underway, Bill Corum uh, told us all that today's game was won, that as he saw it from uh, his long experience, that St. Louis must win. And here is Bill. Through our long associations with him, we have come to doubly respect his opinions, and uh, he has doubly endeared himself to us because of his warm humanness. Bill Corum. Right, Red. And St. Louis did make a gallant bid to win this afternoon in this fourth game of the series here at Sportsman's Park, and now the great crowd is streaming off across the field, downhearted, but they still know that they've got a good ball team and a game. It was a great game for the Yankees to win, a tough one for the Cardinals to lose, and it does look as if they now have their backs to the wall with the Yanks three games to one, and it's sudden death from now on. Joe McCarthy, great manager of the Yankees, a very, very capable baseball man, as everybody knows, took a big gamble on Marius Russo, a sore arm pitcher from Brooklyn, and won his gamble because now he has Spurgeon's Spud Chandler to go with in the fifth game, and Chandler is his eighth. The Cardinals also have their ace uh, in Morton Cooper, but Chandler, of course, can lose, and Cooper can't afford to lose, and there's the difference. The break in this ball game, as I saw it, was when Frankie Crosetti, great little veteran of the Yankees, who was benched last year when Phil Rizzuto came along to take his place at shortstop, but playing a beautiful series this year. Not as good as Gardens, but a grand series in the infield. Broke in back a second base and knocked down Walker Cooper single. It went for a hit, but if Rosetti hadn't knocked it down, because uh, Karowski's long fly ball that followed it would have scored the tying run and given the Cardinals a chance to win this ball game. Both teams left the bases filled. The Cardinals perhaps got a bad break on that because they threw trash and bottles and things on the field and held up the game, and uh, that gave the Yankees, who were jittery at the time, who'd made two very bad errors in that inning and given them the tying run, as a matter of fact, just as the run against Alpha Brazel was given uh, to the Yankees in New York in the third game. Russo, not only a great pitcher this afternoon, but a great hitter. He hits to all fields. He doubled to right. He doubled to left. He walked the first time up. And there's a reason why he should be a great hitter, because he was a first baseman before he became a pitcher, and first basemen are supposed to hit. It was Paul Critchell, the Yankee scout, who changed Russo over into a pitcher from a first baseman, and I guess he's one of the best hitting pitchers in the nice, in the American League and about as good as there is in either league. I'm sure the Cardinals knew that, but there was nothing their left-handers could do. He just laced that ball around. He pitched as he pitched in that game in Brooklyn, which he beat the Dodgers in 1941, a grand ball game. Perhaps a sore arm is what pitchers need to win in this World Series. 
We remember how Arnie White, who got into this game today as a pinch runner, did the same thing against the Yankees last year in the Yankee Stadium and beat Chandler in one of the best pitch games of that series. Russo has only had five victories this year, has against ten defeats, but as I mentioned before the game began, when he's good, he's very good, and he was a great pitcher out there this afternoon. It wouldn't be fair not to say that Max Lanier wasn't the same thing. This has been a well-pitched series on both sides. Lanier has had very tough luck. A good game, tough pitcher to beat. He has now lost two games and might very easily have won both of them. The results, the totals rather, are New York 2-6-2 two, and, two, and St. Louis 1-7-1. One, one. So the Yankees tried to give it away this afternoon. Uh, but couldn't quite do it as the Cardinals had done previously. Red is pointing out here about Harry Bikin. He uh, He's the losing pitcher, of course. I'm sure you know that. I thought you knew that. But uh, uh, Lanier really doesn't get the defeat, and that's my mistake in uh, saying it that way. But, of course, it was his ball game. Bikin, however, is charged in the records as the losing pitcher. He's done very well. He's a good game, cool kid. You can't take anything away from him, this boy from Broken, Broken Bow, Oklahoma. And with the Yankees... Having the bases full there in the ninth inning, he struck out Rousseau after giving two intentional passes and showed that he has lots of courage and lots of stuff, too. But as far as the World Series goes, it looks as if now the Yankees are sitting in the driver's seat and the Cardinals are going to have to play even better than they know, and they know how to play very, very well. Their one error today didn't have any effect on the ball game. On the other hand, the Yankees' two errors did give them a chance to tie and might have turned the tide if they had gone right on then instead of delaying the game, letting Russo go over and sit down to the bench where canny old Bill Dickey took him. It was only fitting that Dickey should have driven in the first run of this ball game and the only legitimate run because uh, uh, he, uh, not the only earned run, of course, but the run that might well have won it at one to nothing because he was playing his 37th World Series game which sets a new record for one player on one team, beating Babe Ruth today, but not tying Frankie Frisch's of 50, but of course, Frisch played with two teams. I was glad to see Bill do that because I very, very much doubt if he'll get in any more of these series, and he's been in every one since he started to be a regular catcher for the Yankees and one of the great monuments of baseball. This was a great ball game, a great crowd, a great day for baseball, and this is a great series, and don't forget, it's still going on tomorrow. That winds up the story of today's game, however. Be with us tomorrow at 2.15 Eastern War Time for the fifth and up to now most crucial game of the World Series. Until then, smooth sailing, smooth shaving, and good afternoon from your host, the Gillette Safety Razor Company, Bob Elson, Red Barber, and Bill Coral. This is Mutual.